Roll call, please. Supervisor Leopold. Here. Coonerty. Here. Caput. Here. McPherson. Here. Chair Friend. Here. If you could all join us for a moment of silence in the Pledge of Allegiance. Mr. Palacios, are there any changes to today's agenda? Uh, yes, we have a, a few changes. There's a correction to um, the agenda on page nine. We've included a new uh, strikeout and underlying uh, copy. There was an issue with the numbering. So revised agenda page nine. On the consent agenda, item number 13, there's additional materials, revised attachment A. And on item 24, there's additional materials. There's a replacement memo, page two. Uh, that concludes the corrections and revisions. Thank you. Uh, we're going to begin today with public comment. It's an opportunity for members of the community to address us on items that are not on the agenda but within the purview of the Board of Supervisors as well as items on the consent agenda. You may also speak on an item on the regular agenda if you're unable to stay for the item on the regular agenda. We do have uh, a couple public uh, regular scheduled items though on the regular agenda. Can I get a sense of how many people are interested in speaking during the public comment period? Okay. Um, Unfortunately, just due to the number of people and the fact that we have a regular scheduled item, I'm going to have to maintain it at two minutes for the public comment. So feel free to come on forward now and um, address us on items either on consent, on the upcoming regular agenda, or on items on today's agenda. Good morning, Gary. Gary Richard Arnold, Chairman. That's outrageous. You're setting up this new set of rules in order to give the public more time and more information, and exactly, you cut it by one third, exactly what Ryan Coonerty did at the city council over there. You're outrageous and it's impossible and Mr. Palacios brought these new rules before this county and all of you adopted them. It's an attempt for censorship. Uh, those rules were written up for politicians by politicians to give you more power so you can control the public. Uh, you kept no minutes or records in coming up with these new rules. The new rules were imposed under the efficiency and pretext. Uh, it's really for censorship. This is outrageous. Uh, one frequent citizen that comes up here uh, has been falsely arrested. Uh, again, Mr. Palacios is acting as attorney. He puts out a, a, a notice to this person not to show up to human services. She issues a letter. They bring the police down and arrest them. There was no legal warrant. Uh, for this particular deal whatsoever. This is an attack, this is censorship against the people out here. Um, according to Amelia of H Human Services, she says Mr. Palacios says that's a legal restraining order, it is not. Um, I was, more I was with Mr. Alexander, the person that was complaining here, when I was picking up a prescription. We put our arm into a blood pressure cuff. His went up to over 150, went into red. I took him to the hospital. At the hospital, he called uh, the county clerk. Uh, he arrived at the courthouse with the doctor's uh, report. He has a warrant for him for not showing up. This is outrageous. This is a Panetta machine of which you guys are totally uh, undercover for. Uh, we've had complaints uh, to the DA about yourself and Leopold about uh, uh, violent uh, threats against people and property. We haven't heard a word from the DS, DA. And also, both these people belong to COPA, who says they can raise 500 people in order to suppress. I encourage people to go to Freedom Thank Forum you. tomorrow night at 7 p.m., which they tried Thank to you. censor illegally with threats of violence Thank to you. property and people. No Thank DA. You. Thank you for starting us off this morning, Gary. Anybody else like to address us during public comment? Yes. Good morning. Good morning. Uh, my name's Tara Ireland. I'm the Senior Programs Manager at the Volunteer Center. I'm joined uh, by Kelly mercer Lieboff from Loudon Nelson uh, Senior Programs. This morning, uh, we wanted to let you know uh, a few things. We're part of a loneliness and isolation work group that formed last fall from the Senior Summit that some of you were at. Our work group focuses on finding solutions and delivering services for our county's most vulnerable seniors. In this first step, we have identified facts about senior loneliness and isolation. We know that social isolation and loneliness 
are a major health issue and a growing public health epidemic, not just for seniors, but for our society as a whole. Um, as more of us live longer, social ties can come apart for us, and the negative effects on health can and be profound. Um, we know that research shows isolation and loneliness are worse for health than obesity and is the equivalent to smoking 15 cigarettes per day. In the coming months, you will start to hear more about these issues as members of the community are working towards uh, working together to create an exhibit at the Ma that shares art, stories, ideas, and issues that surround senior loneliness in Santa Cruz County. By bringing this quiet and invisible issue into the light, we've already seen progress. Recently, at the Downtown Senior Center at Loudon Nelson Community Center, we worked together with LiftLine to use Measure D funds to expand LiftLine services to provide door-to-door -door transportation to all of the classes and activities and programs held at Loudon Nelson for any senior over 60 that lives anywhere in Santa Cruz County. When transportation is a barrier to access, many seniors feel uncomfortable asking for consistent rides, and this discomfort can lead to isolation. At the Volunteer Center, our programs demonstrate that being of service in your community is one possible solution to reduce loneliness and isolation. Data from a national study looking at the health benefits of volunteering found that volunteers report improved health after just Thank one you. year of service. Thank you for listening, and lastly, we encourage you to support and prioritize services for older adults. Thank you. Thank you both for your work. <coughs> you do outstanding work. Good morning, welcome. Good morning. Good morning, I'm Lori Butterworth. I'm the founder and executive director of Jacobs Heart Children's Cancer Support Services. And we are here for a moment of gratitude and thank you for declaring September Childhood Cancer Awareness Month. And we did that the first time 20 years ago at the, when, when then Senator Bruce McPherson took our initiative, our idea, to set aside a month for children with cancer and their families. And that was then signed 20 years ago by Governor Gray Davis at uh, Supervisor McPherson at your prompting and you, you walked that in for us. And we are deeply grateful. We're deeply grateful to Supervisor Caput who donates a portion of his salary here to support children with cancer and their families. So I'm here to say thank you and I have with me Ishtar Carter who would like to read a letter from one of our parents right here in Santa Cruz that she wrote but was not able to be here today and you'll figure out why. Thank you. Good morning, my name is Sarah Moore. I am mourning my oldest son, Charlie. He died of diffuse midline glioma, a rare inoperable brain tumor, on August 31st, 2018, at 11 years old. I am here speaking to you today, thanks to the immeasurable love of Jacob's heart and their selfless acts of compassion during the most traumatic year of our family's life. I received a phone call last September from their founder, Lori Butterworth, the day after Charlie came home from a whirlwind week in the PICU at Stanford. I remember standing on the cliffs above Seabright when she reached out because she heard our child was diagnosed with cancer, and she wanted to tell us about their annual Kid Rageous Carnival the next day in Watsonville. An honest chat and a simple invitation became one of the most meaningful relationships I've had in 40 years. Each individual at Jacob's Heart, from the board members who also work in the cancer ward, the volunteers who paint the brown bags for the grocery deliveries we get on Thursdays, or the ladies who send thank you cards for those of us who can't find the energy, has changed me for the better. We have laughed, cried, anguished, and celebrated together. The Jacobs Hart family has accompanied us to Lucille Packard Children's Hospital, hosted and attended our kids' birthday parties, paid our bills for us, and gave us the priceless gift of time at their annual family weekend, Camp Heart and Hands. When some of the most amazing pediatric neuro-oncologists in the country tell you to create memories with your dying child, it makes all the difference in the world if you have the heartfelt experience, financial, emotional, and psychological support of a unique organization like Jacob's Heart. In our dreams, they wouldn't exist. In our shattered reality, they are vital to the survival of kids, siblings, parents, 
grandparents, relatives, and friends who are literally doing their best to endure the unfathomable. We appreciate your public acknowledgement. They deserve every honor and accolade for 20 years of making the surreal details manageable, the hardest moments somehow happy, assuring us that despite the lack of national funding for pediatric cancer, someone cares. Thank you. Thank you for sharing that. I'd just like to thank Jacob's Heart for what it's done and what it started, and I believe me, it was a privilege and an honor to uh, carry that message to the st on the state level uh, to, According to the, because according to the National Childhood uh, Foundation, Cancer Foundation, cancer kills more children than asthma, diabetes, cystic fibrosis, and AIDS combined. Uh, it's um, just a heart-wrenching uh, situation, but it's, it's just tremendous that we have people like uh, Jacob's Heart, who led the charge and uh, has uh, provided so much care and caring and understanding to those who need it most. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Supervisor McPherson. Thank you both for what you're doing. Thank you. Good morning, welcome. Good morning. Hi, my name is Josh Clark, and I'm here today to speak about Second Story and its closing. And, you know, two years ago, I was considered what, what people consider mentally ill. And to be able to go to a place and really work on what issues were, were there and the issues that really separate me from what I would consider being a part of society. Those issues really, it kept me from living the life that I have now. And part of that, part of Second Story is having the, the support there to help me get back to those, the, that point that I was at. And today I'm back at that point even better, you know. Second Story was there for me at the bottom of the ladder and is still there 20 rungs up. And it'd be a shame for it to, to be taken away so abruptly. You know, uh, two years ago I used it as, as a way to, to get back on, on the horse, and now I'm using it to get on a horse further, like another horse. I'm hopping off one horse, getting onto another horse, going further down the line. Now, we we're searching for funding right now. Funding is, is really the, the hard part about this. Without funding, we wouldn't be able to operate the house, which is the key component to what makes Second Story work. Um, you know, other programs have been proposed, but at the same time, they haven't been planned out as well as Second Story has been um, executed. And so to be clear, Second Story really isn't Second Story without the house, and will not be second story if we can't find funding by come December this year. Thank you. Thank you, Thank you for sharing. Good morning, welcome. Thank you Good for waiting. Morning. My name is Jose Reyes, and um, I'm here to appeal to you in regards to Second Story as well. Um, second Story is a respite model that has really worked for me, and um, I'm here to explain to you just my situation. But um, keep in mind that I am one of many Okay, so I know you're kind people and you care a lot, but I'm also here to appeal to you with some numbers. Okay, last, this year alone, I have cost the taxpayers of Santa Cruz County and California over $100,000 in hospital stays, mental health facilities, um, health insurance, uh, and, and also public benefits. Okay, I'm very much a recipient of the, of the mental health system, but as a, as a, as a, a I'm very much a part of that model, but as a recipient. Um, since Second Story uh, and the support of my peers and the respite house, because the problem was my environment, it was triggering um, a lot of symptoms within myself. And my diagnosis I will keep to myself because it's personal. But since Second Story and the peer support model, I have gained employment full time. I now uh, am going to get uh, health insurance, so I will not be taxing the taxpayers anymore in regards to my, my mental health issues. Um, and also I am now um, negotiating as we speak more permanent housing. So remember, I am one of many people. This model, yes, may be expensive, but consider the alternative, okay? It may, it may be something that a couple weeks at Second Story is gonna save over $100,000, potential $100,000 next year on just one person alone. 
I am very expensive. But this program, <laughs> this program has changed the trajectory of my life. I had a suicide attempt about two years ago. Um, I no longer uh, feel that that is necessary for me to escape my problems. Um, and it's all because of the, um, the peer support model that we have here. Thank okay. you. Thank you. Thank you. Good morning, welcome. Thank you for waiting. Thank you. <coughs> Hi, my name is Jennifer Collin. Um, I'd like to talk about Second Story and in support of it. Uh, Second Story is an irreplaceable source of hope and support in our community. It is a sanctuary for people who need it. Um, the peer support counselors are empathic and they help to create positive differences in the lives of their peers. Um, I worked at Second Story as, after having been inspired to by my stay there. I now work as a peer support coach with Front Street Incorporated. Um, it's a community-based mobile support system and it's helpful to many. But there is talk of transforming Second Story into this sort of program. But I tell you, it is not the same thing. Uh, the atmosphere of Second Story, it's a crucial element in the availability of this dynamic mental health service that our county needs. I just want to support it and need to stay open. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for sharing. Good morning, welcome. Good morning, my name is Adrian Bernard. Hello again. I hope it's a wonderful day and thank you for everything that you all do. I have a, um, I have a paperwork here that, that talks about it's a response to the Q&A that our, a couple of people in our advocacy group have written. So I'm gonna offer this to you. There's one thing that is not absolutely accurate is confirmation about PEI money being able to be spent to fund Second Story. We're still, we're certain that it is possible, but that it's not, we say confirmed and we'll have final confirmation within the next couple of weeks about that and we'll be reaching out to you for that. I, I also, I think that that's what I wanna say and I just wanna say also to clear the record with, with our involvement in building the new program is is, an, is a matter of necessity. People need to work, so we are we are moving forward with building this program, and, and we don't do things halfway as best we can. We're going to offer excitement and energy to create something. We we need the house, and that's the most important element to have this sanctuary for ourselves as a team and our and for our community. I think that is incredibly important to be aware of the national spotlight being on Santa Cruz right now for this for this current dilemma that we're facing. Peer respite houses are a growing model. There's now 34 in the state, or sorry, there's now 34 in the nation, and, we're, and they're still continuing to flourish and grow. On another note, uh, with I'm gonna stop about second story there and talk about the FAA and the flight path and, and things of that sort. I think it's incredibly important that, that we have board representation on in those meetings and discussion with the FAA so that we are actually, we have strength coming from this important matter also change the flight lanes if we can. Thank you, good morning. Welcome, thank you for waiting. Hi, my name is Dana Watts and I'm speaking on the behalf of Second Story. A couple of years ago I was dealing with psychosis and it caused me to hear voices and have hallucinations and um, and but ever since I've been at the rest at the at the house, it's really been another home for me. To me, just going to someone's house that they're already living at and talking to them isn't the same because what if they're in distress at their home environment? Um, I feel like it's an alternative to the hospital or their home environment. Um, um, before I had this community, I was isolating. Second story has helped me cope with my voices. Um, by showing me ways to be friends with my voices. It's not only, um, it's like another home to me. It, it's, it's not the same as someone just coming to your house or coming to a coffee shop and talking, and, and talking to you. It's, it's someone that can, has experienced mental illness um, who actually can talk to you or um, really understand what you're saying and not have um, someone that doesn't experience that on day-to-day -day basis to come talk to you. It just isn't the same. Thank you. Thank you. Good morning, welcome back. 
Good morning, everybody. My name is Teresa Tomei. I'm from the Small Business Development Center at Cabrillo College. I'm here on a different theme. I'm here to thank you for your funding of our program. I work closely with Barbara Mason, and she has uh, enabled me to receive $29,000 of funding from you every year. I'm here to tell you where that money has been invested in the community, and I have handouts for each of you, if I may, um, and there's also a, a packet for you. So you each have an individual packet here with um, a story of a client in your constituency area whom we've helped through your funding. We pool your funding with many different funding sources from the federal government, from the state of California, and also from the county's Workforce Development Board uh, layoff aversion program, where despite this current white hot economy, we're still seeing small businesses who are struggling and might possibly be laying off employees uh, in order to stay afloat. So we go in and do very in-depth analysis to help them not lay off employees. I want to just talk briefly about uh, last year in the fiscal year, we helped 330 local small businesses. We provided over 2,300 hours of free of charge, free of charge, one-on-one -on -one counseling to those businesses, presented 30 workshops to over 650 attendees. We are very much governed by the results that our counseling produces with our clients, so we measure very carefully baseline data. Last year alone, we helped our clients in this county grow their sales by $24 million. That's a good multiplier for you relative to tax generation. We uh, helped create 248 jobs. The most, uh, St the, the most profound statistic is that we helped our clients get over $9.3 million in loans. We all know that capital investment's the number one reason for business success, so we're really proud of that. So we feel you're, we are a good investment Thank for you. you, and we are very grateful for your investment, Thank and you. I have also developed a new guideline for checklist for going into business. Thank you, Ms. Tomei. Thanks. Appreciate that it. was really fast. Oh, my. Thank you. <laughs> good morning. Good morning. Thank you for waiting. Thank you. Um, I'm here, oh, my name is Mia De La Rosa. I'm here to speak on behalf of Second Story. Um, almost two and a half years ago, I truly believed I would never again gain, um, will attain gainful employment. Um, uh, let's see, by surrounding myself with people who believed in me uh, and not alone wanted me to become a better Mia. Um, let's see, oops, I lost my page here, I'm sorry. Um, I not only uh, became a better Mia, but I am now a counselor, a peer counselor at Second Story. Um, sure, I put in most of the footwork, um, but uh, I've surrounded myself with those people. Um, uh, however, that, you know what they say, it takes a village. Um, I would like to make you aware that this morning, you are the most important part of that village. <coughs> Um, folks, this couldn't be more true throughout the gambit of mental health, um, from the treaters and the providers to the families and the patients. So I ask you to please help us save our story. Thank you. Thank you. Good morning, welcome. Good morning, I'm Kathleen Almon. We have to stop and think. We have to think about what was the purpose of the second story. The purpose of the second story was to save money for the county. And because once a person gets sick, they're critical, will the hospital will take them. We take them before they become critical so that we can prevent them from going to the hospital. And then if the hospital is full, they get sent to another county. And uh, to be able to get this far and then made flat as a pancake would be ridiculous. That's my question. Thank you. Thank you. Good morning. Thank you for waiting. Thank you. Hi, my name is Tracy Kennedy, and I'm here in support of Second Story. Um, I just wanted to um, reiterate that it's an important program for the county, very important for the mental health system. And I also wanted to um, ask if anyone in the audience is unable to speak, but here in support of Second Story, if you could raise your hand. So I um, just wanted to give you guys an idea that there are people here um, supporting us that, for whatever reason, are unwilling to speak to you. So thank you very much. Thank you. Good morning. Welcome. Uh, good morning. 
I took time off uh, from my busy day here to uh, come in here today to uh, speak on Victorious uh, Alexander's behalf. Uh, this is a letter that he sent for the, for the DA on date 9618. I was aware I had court a court date, which I had every intention of attending. Unfortunately, I had an urgent unexpected health matter, which required me to seek immediate medical care at Dominican Hospital. I'm writing you to verify I did my best under these circumstances to inform the court of this urgent circumstances by one. I phoned the clerk's office and provided the information that I was at the hospital. Two, I arrived at 3 p.m. to the courthouse following my release from the hospital. Three, I provided a copy of the doctor's note, which, which is here to the DA. Uh, due to my health, financial, and homeless circumstances, I am struggling with matters of hardship, health, and life cha challenges faced by the low socioeconomic population. I do my best to emotionally rise above these hardships each day. I appreciate your understanding uh, that the health concerns were urgent and beyond my control. I respectfully ask that the court date be rescheduled sincerely. So Victor has a, you know, we, we know that that's an excusable uh, reason for being not missing your court date and, and he did everything that he said here uh, not to have a bench warrant and one was issued anyway and I would just say that uh, if, if we're not serving justice in God's will you know whose will are we serving you know and, and I take it very serious I, I, I have, uh, you know I, I get very angry it induces it, it provokes it's provoking to know that, that the judges and the DA's can bend the law to serve you know their own will uh, we may not like the way everybody uh, approaches things, but, but we still have to remember it's justice for all. And uh, thank you. Thank you. Good morning, thank you for waiting. Hi, um, my name is Bill Miller and I'm from SoCal. And I'm here to affirm the support of uh, Santa Cruz's involvement with the South Bay Roundtable. Participating in the Roundtable uh, facilitates us moving forward to resolve the flight noise issue and pursuing a path that we all agree upon at the select committee meetings. The round table is our contact to the FAA to voice our concerns and to uh, give them feedback as per our agreed method for noise issue reduction. The select committee, at the time of the agreement, we, we, we agreed to have feedback to minimize the impact of moving the flight to back to a modified path. This round table provides that forum. The concerns from affected groups can be aired and resolved. We have no other forum now and to address, uh, to address issues or to resolve issues as we move forward. Um, I recommend voting uh, for agenda item uh, 6014. Uh, agenda item 6037 was written by members who opposed the select committee recommendations and the process moving forward. I believe they want to stop the process forward. Uh, they want to do over and throw out years of work that we had done and, and that we voted for. Uh, for example, uh, 2016, the month after the committee's recommendations were made, the authors brought an item to the board to oppose the decision by the select committee and they were voted down. Further, uh, further, they recently met at the forming of the South Bay Committee opposing Santa Cruz's representation to the round table. Now they want to be our representatives for the round table. I, I believe it's not beneficial to have members who oppose the process represent the county. Um, I recommend no on agenda number 6037. Thank you, and, and Mr. Miller, just a note that we have, uh, that item is scheduled for 10.30. People are welcome to speak on it now. However, you, we are gonna hear the item at 10.30 and people will have an opportunity to speak on it then, so you wouldn't be allowed to speak again. Oh, okay. uh, this is generally for people who won't be able to stay. Um, so I just wanna right. make sure that that point, that, sorry, don't, don't apologize. It was actually appropriate to speak now, just note that you can't speak again when this item comes, but if people are here for that item, we're gonna have a whole hearing on that item at 10.30, so that would be uh, the time if you're gonna stay. Thank you, Mr. Miller. Good morning, thank you for waiting. Good morning. My name is Ann Steinloff, I live in SoCal. I'm also here to speak about the flight thing and the uh, round table. So I'm here to support uh, the agenda 6014. Uh, so after three years of organizing, planning, meetings all over the county, from the west side, SoCal, the summit, Scotts Valley, Felton, and months of driving to Palo Alto, uh, where finally the Democratic Select Committee voted democratically 
to resolve the jet flight issues for the Bay Area. And now we have to battle this whole thing over again with the board, Mr. McPherson and Mr. McCoonerty. Mr. Uh, McCoonerty, uh, have you been the last three years? Where have you been the last three years? Um, I don't recall. I don't believe having seen you at the huge Sam Farr meetings, nor at any Palo Alto meetings. I missed you at the Panetta meetings as well. For that matter, I haven't seen you at any local meetings, gatherings, or demonstrations. And what really stands out for me, Mr. McCoonerty and Mr. McPherson, is your opposition to the select committee decisions. Your efforts to oppose these decisions failed at the December 2016 meeting, board meeting. Then, as a major affront to all of us affected by jet noise, Mr. McPherson and Mr. McCoonerty, um, you send a letter to the FAA December 11th, 2017, claiming that the select committee decisions eight to four in favor of BSR <coughs> overlay is not good enough to return to the 40-year legacy BSR flight path. You want to fix in place. Well, there, there's no such thing. Surfer Thank isn't you. possible to Thank fix you. in place. <laughs> Thank you. Good morning. Good morning. Thank you for allowing me to speak. My name is Patrick Lovejoy. My home, which I built myself, is directly under the Surfer 3 flight path. I chose that area because it had been quiet. Previously, I lived in the San Lorenzo Valley, but I moved because the echoing car noise during the commutes was becoming unbearable. I never noticed the jet noise there, probably because it was an optimized descent profile or was drowned out by the car noise. The unannounced move of flight paths by the FAA has resulted in over three years of bombardment by noise from speed braking and jet engines. Unlike the legacy Big Sur route, jets on Surfer do not use optimized profile, hence it's far louder than the Big Sur route ever was. In fact, the recent change to Surfer 3 is even worse than Surfer 1. Throughout all this time, John Leopold has been working hard to understand this issue and to work for solutions. He knows all the terminology, statistics, proposed solutions, and all the key personnel involved in this problem. I have full confidence in him, and I support his item 6014 and urge you to appoint him as our representative to the round table. <clears throat> On the other hand, Mr. McPherson and Coonerty have demonstrated a misunderstanding of the circumstances and solutions, basing their opinion on fear tactics promoted by a small contingent of poorly informed constituents in San Lorenzo Valley. The record shows that historically, San Lorenzo Valley posted only one noise complaint about Big Sur in 2014. The proposal 6037 states that the two-thirds majority of the select committee to return to the legacy BSR is, quote, the most minimal margin. This bad faith attempt to minimize a 66 and two-thirds percent majority demonstrates their intent to undo the hard work of the select committee, our congressional representatives, and hundreds of hours and miles driven to meetings, lost work and dollars expended by members of our community to Thank reach you. a solution equitably. Thank, Thank you. you. And again, as a reminder, uh, please, if we could, uh, that item will be heard at 1030, so if you're here for that item and you can stay, please speak to it at 1030. If you can't, this is appropriate. Good morning. Welcome back. Good morning, uh, Kevin Collins. I wasn't anticipating coming down here this morning, but uh, colleagues request that I do so. I'm addressing the uh, PG&E issue. Uh, as most of you probably know by now, there's a battalion strength encampment in Scotts Valley. There are probably 25 boom trucks, equal number of other support vehicles, totaling probably 100 uh, trucks. Uh, this is in, on top of the uh, already s existing staging areas that uh, Davy Tree has established around the county anyway. So uh, it's a big deal. Obviously, they ignored the request this board made on the 23rd of September, I think it was, when you asked them to have meetings to explain the project. Uh, I've come here before to point out that uh, nothing that uh, is being proposed by PG&E does anything to, do, to uh, handle the issue of fire ignitions from downed wires. 
when those wires fall, they continue snap arcing at 12 to 22 and a half thousand volts until a lineman arrives on site with a stick to pull a switch. That's how antique this network is. Continuing to cut these trees isn't gonna have any effect on fire safety in this mountain range. And that map was designed specifically to uh, point out the areas where fires are most likely to be ignited by utility equipment, specifically. The CEQA exemption that the commission, the CPUC has claimed, claims that there is no project. Well, this no project extends across thousands of square miles of the state of California, innumerable uh, streams and river riparian areas and stream crossings. It's quite amazing. I, I've never seen the likes of it before, and I hope the board continues to uh, assist with this issue because people like me could have our property decimated. I live on a one-lane private road. A 30, well, I have to stop Thank now. Thomas. Thank you very much. Thank you. Good morning. Good morning. Thank you for waiting. Good morning. Thank you. Uh, my name is John Dietz. Um, I have 27 years of personal experience sustaining the housing of family member with a mental diagnosis. I'm here to speak to two professional experiences and a recommendation related to second story respite house. Second story has been in operation for seven years as the peer support facility that is unique in creating trusted family relationship between peers. That seems to be the point that's being missed. Uh, the peers that have common lived experience of major behavioral issues to problem solving as a trusted family, so they do it as a group. I'm the leader and organizer of the volunteer housing navigators that have housed over 50 homeless, 50% 50 of which are participants in the county behavioral health program. We have five years of operational experience. Of those participants that have experienced second story, 100% have successfully stayed housed. Our program has an overall 50% retention rate, 20% below the standard, so I'm a witness to the success of Second Story. There is also um, a, a business view of Second Story. The county has raised 150 million in Second Story salaries over the past seven years. Housed, uh, they have a house of a respectable neighborhood financed by CHFFA that uh, lacked uh, years to secure. Uh, the county is uh, uh, invested in specialized IPS training for 16 staffers, 22 classes for 22 uh, community organizations, and the county cannot raise 700,000 per year to sustain this operation. So closing second story is a uninformed business decision that will cost the county more than it saves. Uh, it's gonna destroy a peer support model that keeps the homeless house and replace it with a model that lacks a home and community. My team and I recommend Thank you. that the Board of Supervisors demand Thank 700K you. from the county CAO. Thank you. Thank you. Good morning. Thank you all for waiting. Um, my name is Patrice Silviak. I am here also in support of Second Story. Um, I am Director of Community Services for Front Street and um, supervise a supported housing program. So I have seen firsthand over and over since Second Story came on board, the success, the impact that it has made on the clients who are living in our housing, the supported housing program. Probably a quarter of the um, tenants that we house utilize that program and they come away with nothing but positive, reinforced support systems, um, sense of self, empowerment, um, and Second Story is one of the, uh, it's a very unique option in the spectrum of services for the community. I once uh, was the director of the social rehab programs, which we lost. That impact has been felt, uh, maybe we lost those about eight years ago. That impact has been felt and they've never been able to be replaced. And so keeping it up and running versus um, trying to get something going again in the future, I think is a much better option. Um, we all need a place of respite. This is, this is a place that many individuals, it's the only place for people to go to. They may be living with a housemate that is having difficulty 
and um, it's very hard, it's rough living with that person. Where can a person go in a situation like that? Second story is where we sent, where, where, where people often find themselves to get a little respite, to get a little peace, so they can sustain their own mental health stability while, you know, experiencing someone else in close quarters who is having trouble with theirs, as well as if they're having difficulty with their own. Um, second story is a safe place, it's empowering, it's very respected within the mental health community. It's an option that's very unique in this community, and they've done a fabulous job. We really depend on them. Thank you. Good morning, uh, welcome back. Good morning. Uh, my name is Rebecca Mills. I'm speaking about the closure of the Second Story House. I've worked there for over two years as an on-call counselor. The announcement in late August that Second Story would be closing at the end of November came as a shock to guests, staff, and the community. Uh, this decision was made without any input from those people, um, and this is troubling and continues to be traumatizing. Um, second Story staff have been told they must abandon a community environment they have built that has produced results for eight years and pioneer an entirely new and different program with completely different job responsibilities. As news of this decision has spread, there has been an outpouring of support to keep the respite house. Discarding this program and replacing it with a completely different service is risky. Uh, residential peer respite has a proven impressive record of benefits and guest satisfaction. The new field-based program without a residential component is an experiment, a completely different service with an unknown set of potential benefits. Um, Without the residential option, we can expect to see increased costly and ineffective psychiatric hospitalizations and other outcomes, including homelessness, substance abuse, and suicide. The bulk of the respite house budget is in personnel and salaries. Do the cost savings of preserving jobs but eliminating the house justify the loss and risk of this transition? In the mental health system, it is sustainable to hospitalize people in a traumatic environment with an enormous cost but a low chance of recovery yet not sustainable to provide a much less costly prevention-oriented alternative that allows people to attain and regain wellness. This needs to change. I ask for your support to create the time before closing this program to truly allow every possible option to be explored, not behind closed doors as has been done, but with the participation of affected community members and important stakeholders. Thank you. Thank you. Good morning. Thank you for waiting. I can't stay till later. I just want to come and say my name is Gloria Wells. I live in Soquel Hills. And our family has been on the same parcel for now over 100 years. I have camped and hiked all over the Santa Cruz Mountains, and so I do realize what the jet noise was like in the Castle Rock and San Lorenzo Valley prior to this switch. Uh, I did not experience much in the way of jet noise when I camped at Castle Rock. So now, with this change to the new flight path, I would encourage both McPherson and Coonerty to visit the Castle Rock State Park and listen to the magnitude of the jet noise that comes overhead. Please, I understand that you do not want that kind of noise in your neighborhood either, but if you go back to the old route, there was not much noise. And with the improved flight path that they, FAA, promised and committed to, that they would put the flight path even higher over the San Lorenzo Valley, that you should please have some compassion for us in the Soquel Hills and over by Castle Rock to um, see what we're being impacted with. Thank you. Thank you. Good morning. Hi, my name is Carol Payne, and I live in District 5, right under the flight path, I can't stay, and I have to leave at 10.30, so I wanted to simply tell you that you have a lot of constituents in the mountains who adamantly disagree with your stance, Mr. McPherson, on this matter. Thank you. Thank you. Good morning. Thank you for waiting. Good morning, Becky Steinbrunner, resident of Aptos Hills. I want to first uh, protest again the censorship that your board has approved by consolidating all of this public comment, both consent, non-agenda, and agenda items, and further reducing it to two minutes. I would like to know, Mr. Palacio, what strategic plan element does this action serve? 
I would like to also further Mr. Collins' concern about the Scotts Valley PG&E Base Camp. I would like your board to meet with uh, Public Works Director Mr. Machado and um, urge a stop work order for all of this. It will imperil the mountain roads by removing, clear cutting these areas and can cause the county and its residents severe financial harm and danger. I want to also uh, point out that uh, thank you for, pro for supporting prop State Proposition 1. I'm wondering why you're not supporting Proposition 2 as well. It's a good housing bill as well. I want to uh, point out that in supporting Proposition 3, you are uh, also giving priority to critically overdrafted areas for groundwater and stormwater capture. I want to tell you there is a cheaper way than Pure Water SoCal's $200 million project, and the water will begin flowing from the North Coast streams this winter. The infrastructure is in place, and we don't have to have that risky, very expensive project. The Water Advisory Commission, there are 29 changes to code in this uh, consent agenda. One of them is to the Water Advisory Commission that removes the words specifically advise the Board of Supervisors on formulation, review, update, and implementation of the county water plan. That does not serve you. You've got people on that board with also changing the different numbers of service connections that they can be representing. They're there to advise you. They're out in the field and they know, don't support this change. It will not serve the public well. Thank, Thank you. you. And just as a matter of correction from a statement that was made, we did not consolidate all comment on regular agenda items. You can still speak to regular agenda items during the regular agenda. The point of this is if you couldn't stay for the regular agenda, this gives you an opportunity, so it's more convenient. Uh, next person, please. It's been explained a couple times already. I understand that. Okay, but that isn't actually what you just said. So good morning and welcome. Oh, hello, I'm John Cowan. I also live in uh, North Scotts Valley, and I want to tell you that this uh, new uh, Rate, uh, route that the, the planes take is very annoying. Mornings, they come over every minute and a half. Afternoons, every minute and a half. But what's most annoying of all is uh, at one o'clock in the morning, the cargo planes come over and they, uh, they're heavies and, and they put on their speed brakes and it rattles the windows and wakes people up. Uh, we need to get the FAA to come up with something that uh, respects the, the people that are underneath their flight paths. And I'm, I'm a pilot. I, I know why they're doing what they're doing, but um, they're, they're just not taking into consideration uh, what, what people need in order to uh, uh, retain the, the comfortable place that, they, that they've always lived. Uh, uh, my request is that you uh, appoint uh, Super Supervisor Leopold for the meeting coming up. Thank you. Thank you. Good morning. <coughs> Thank you for waiting. Thank you. Um, good morning. My name is Cindy. Um, I'm a peer guest and community member of Second Story. I have struggled with mental health for most of my life. I'm a survivor of trauma. Many times, um, are my times of extreme psychological crisis are life-threatening and directly related to my trauma. In January of this year, I had a serious suicide attempt that I almost did not survive. After leaving local health facilities, my life was still in danger and I had no supportive environment to help me get through this crisis. Second Story Peer Respite House was suggested to me as a place with trauma-informed care and understanding. This peer community is like a garden where other peers can show up, get their feet dirty, plant the seeds of hope and new perspectives, be watered with acceptance and not judgment from the peer team because of their lived experience and recovery, given the shining sun of peer support and reflection and a deep rooted connection to this irreplaceable community. As a peer, you become a seedling in this garden and you can return home knowing that the garden is there, growing, surviving, all the elements and thriving and you become a member of the Second Story community, a flower in the garden. You know that you are not alone, you are connected to something, your roots become interwoven into the fabric of the garden, the community. I do not have any friends or family locally, and Second Story has become my chosen family, a place where I can be me, all of me, a place where I can make mistakes and learn from them, a place to explore the power and strength found in connection to others that are willing to see me and put me and not put me in a clinical box. 
value, they value my contributions to the house and the community, and I'm not only a flower in the second story garden, I'm one that is cherished, which is not something I've experienced much in my life, being seen, heard, valued, and truly cherished. Second Story has saved my life many times in the last six months by accepting and welcoming me into their um, home as a peer. Thank you. Thank you, thank you for sharing. Good morning, welcome. Um, so many um, policies are taking place that benefit corporate interests and not the public. I heard that the reason the flight patterns are so low is that uh, they want to make more space at higher levels for the drones and the military aircraft. <laughs> and the, uh, it's not only the noise, but I want to remind you, I have this acoustic meter that detects microwave radiation from different sources. And my friend who lives in the mountains has under the flight pattern, and this is what these frequencies sound like on this acoustic meter. Every time the planes go over, this gets a high reading and her full spectrum analyzer does as well. These pulse modulated frequencies are extremely hazardous and I see there's a uh, forum with the telecom industry with Bruce McPherson moderating tonight, six to eight at the Felton Community Hall with the providers, with not having anyone on that forum who's talking about the adverse biological effects. Taking the word of the telecom industry is like believing the tobacco industry on the safety of their products. I'm going to give you a CD of Martin Paul. I interviewed Professor Emeritus School of Molecular Biosciences, um, Sciences, uh, Washington State University, and uh, author of numerous scientific papers on oxidation, stress, and inflammation. It's called How Dangerous is Non-Ionizing Radiation. He talks about these pulse modulations. I have a few other copies. If someone wants it, ask me. You, you know this is a hazardous technology. You've been informed repeatedly. Thank you. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning, my name is Ed D. I live in uh, District 5 and I'm um, here to talk about the jets and the noise as well. I'm not going to go on about, I think everyone knows that they're very loud, they rattle the windows at 1 in the morning, people sleep with earplugs, they, you know, can't sleep anymore. I think, you know, my comments today really, I, I want, I want to empower you, I mean, with a call to action, um, I, I do request that, um, that um, Supervisor Leopold sit on the on the FAA's roundtable, he seems to be, I see him in the community, I see him listening, and I see him helping us take our agenda forward. But really the call to action is, I don't understand why other communities like Newport Beach, Phoenix, Arizona are making, are gaining ground on having the flight plans less noisy for their communities and having them move back to uh, other flight patterns that were still conducive for the airline and yet less I I imposing this sound uh, attack uh, on the people that live under them. It seems like other communities are figuring it out and you know here in the San Francisco Bay Area and including Santa Cruz, San Mateo and Santa Clara counties and San Francisco County, we're, we're supposed to be world leaders in um, things like technology and things like this and I don't understand why we don't have a ballot, why a ballot measure to uh, not allow the airlines to, you know, basically move their trash, you know, on our heads. I, I just don't understand why we're not taking more of a leadership role, why we're just kind of rolling over and going with, you know, um, whatever our little local agendas are. I mean, we have recommendations by the select committee. Um, we should be taking a leadership role and helping those push forward, and, you know, with constant communication with the FAA and updates. And I mean, I just, I don't get it. Your, your constituents are really suffering. You've heard it every meeting. People come up here and tell you how we're suffering. And, and it's like, we're just going too slow, guys. We need, to, we need to really take a leadership role in this and make sure that we can put things back to a win-win for everybody. This isn't, you know, nobody really loses uh, other than the people that are suffering under, under this noise right Thank now. Thank so thank you for listening. All right, thank you. All right, we will.
close the public comment period and now uh, do the consent agenda. Are there, uh, we'll start with Supervisor Caput. Is there anything you'd like to pull or discuss on consent? Okay, Supervisor McPherson. Yeah, on item uh, 27, I want to thank you, Chair Friend, for signing this request to support Proposition 3. Um, as stated in the resolution, California highly, su <coughs> highly susceptible, and Santa Cruz County is especially uh, susceptible and impacted because of our water is locally gener generated, all of it. We have two overdrafted groundwater basins, and Proposition 3 would assist us, uh, the counties and throughout the state in water supply and water quality priorities, uh, as well as fish habitat protection. In addition to several of our other water agencies, Scotts Valley, Soco Creek, and Pabro Valley, uh, Proposition 3 is supported by the California State Association of Counties and the League of California Cities. So I thank your support, uh, thank you for your support and for the board for uh, hopefully uh, supporting this request to support Proposition 3. Thank you, Supervisor McPherson. Good morning, Supervisor Coonerty. Hi, good morning. Uh, just two items to comment on, or one, one item to comment on, one for further direction. First is on item number 26. Uh, Chair Friend and I brought forward this initiative to support Prop 1, and I hope the community does as well. We face a housing crisis, and uh, this state money in combination with potential local money uh, and some new policies can help uh, you know, maintain our, the vibrancy of our community where we can continue to have teachers and, uh, and, and law enforcement and social workers and people who, who have grown up in this community stay in this community uh, through having affordable housing. The second uh, item to talk about is item number 34. Uh, this, I'm really happy to see this. This is a significant expansion of uh, drug treatment options in our community through a contract with Janus. I'd like to add the following direction, uh, which is that HSA uh, add the following performance measures to the contract. Number one, the number of clients who remain sober six months post-treatment, and number two, the number of nights that residential treatment beds go unfilled. So in other words, the occupancy of these beds. I think this will help us give us a sense as to how well we are uh, providing this important resource to this community. Thank you. Good morning, Supervisor Leopold. Uh, good morning, Chair. I just have uh, one item that I'll say something about, which is uh, item number 19. Uh, it's a recommendation of the Mobile Home Commission uh, to remain at, uh, that their uh, rate of return for qualified mobile home park improvements remain at 12 percent. I just wanted to use this opportunity to thank the members of the Mobile Home Commission uh, for their job in representing uh, the thousands of people that live in mobile home parks. Uh, throughout Santa Cruz County. Uh, the, the commissioners take an active role not only in representing the needs of individuals in parks, but they also advocate uh, with our legislators um, uh, to ensure that we have good legislation that protects the rights of mobile home uh, 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 residents. Um, and I'm, I'm hopeful that uh, this board will be able to recognize Assemblymember Mark Stone, who recently uh, passed legislation to give an actual way for mobile home park residents to um, uh, 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 to use to have an, a, a, a form where the mobile home law uh, can be honored and adjudicated. Uh, the the uh, commission has done a great job in doing this locally, but we need the help of a statewide agency in order to make it successful. So I just wanted to call that out. Uh, and this item, and I'm just very proud of the work of the Mobile Home uh, and Manufactured Home Commission. Thank you for sharing that, Supervisor Leopold. Just uh, real briefly, item 25 on Supervisor Coonerty's item, just a small typo, it's uh, Tim Gubbins, not Grubbins, just to make sure that we get that correct in the, in the letter. And I have uh, no additional uh, changes. Is there a motion for the uh, agen uh, amended agenda? I'd move uh, the consent, uh, agenda. consent agenda as amended. Second. We have a motion from Supervisor Leopold, a second from Supervisor Coonerty. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? It passes unanimously. We'll move on to item six, the first item of the regular agenda, which is a public hearing to consider a report on the 2019 growth goal and refer to the matter of the Planning Commission for consideration and recommendation of the board and continue the public hearing to establish the 2019 growth goal to December 11th, 2018, as recommended by the Planning Director. We have a report on the year 2019 growth goal. Morning, thank you both uh, for waiting. Morning. Good morning. Um, 
We're here to have the annual discussion on setting the growth goal for the county, and I have the pleasure this morning of introducing Stephanie Hansen, who will give the board's uh, report. Stephanie is the principal planner who will be managing the sustainability and special projects group in the planning department. Good morning, chair, friend, members of the board. The county's growth management system was instituted in 1979 following the adoption of Measure J to address the resource and public services impacts of population growth in Santa Cruz County. As part of the growth management system, each year the county is required to set an annual growth goal for the upcoming year. The 2019 growth goal report is before you today for consideration prior to referral to the Planning Commission. <coughs> This report examines various factors used in establishing the 2019 growth goal for the unincorporated area. As noted in the report, during the calendar year 2017, the unincorporated area's population increased at an estimated <coughs> annual growth rate of 0.07%. The county as a whole grew slightly faster at 0.13% and California's population grew at an annual rate of 0.78%. By comparison, the annual growth rate in 2016 for the unincorporated county was 0.29%, the county of the whole, as a whole was 0.28%, and the state was 0.82%, uh, indicating a recent downward trend in population growth rates. The growth goal report also summarizes the current status of the 2018 residential building permit allocations as shown on page three of the board memo. As of August 1st, 31 market rate units have been allocated out of the 261 allocations available for 2018. Plus, there are 233 carryover allocations available uh, left over from 2017. We anticipate that there will be more than sufficient permits available for the remainder of this year. Based on analysis of population growth trends, resource constraints, and the current permit allocation status, the 2019 growth goal report recommends continuing the 0.5% growth goal that was established for 2018. This would result in a residential building permit allocation of 256 market rate units for, this, for the upcoming year, which would be distributed by urban and rural areas at a two to one ratio, the same as in past years. The 2019 growth goal report also recommends, as in previous years, that the unused market rate allocations from 2018 be carried over to 2019 in accordance with policy 3.2 of the general plan housing element and added to the 256 permit allocations. This would result in a projected total of 464 market rate allocations available for two, 2019. Staff has found that the establishment of the 2019 growth goal report is exempt under the California Environmental Quality Act and a categorical ex exemption will be prepared. Staff therefore recommends to the board, one, open the public hearing to consider the report on the year 2019 growth goal, two, refer this matter to the Planning Commission for consideration and recommendation to the board, three, continue the public hearing to establish the 2019 growth goal on December 11, 2018, with direction to planning staff to return with the recommendation of the Planning Commission and a re resolution for final action by the board. This concludes our presentation. We'd be happy to answer any questions you may have. Thank you. Thank you. Are there any brief questions from Board Member Supervisor Leopold? Uh, thank you, Chair. Uh, thank you for the report. Um, I just had a question. Uh, is uh, assisted living or memory care facilities, do they count towards the residential uh, permits? They do. Okay. Because I, that, you know, what we, um, in SoCal, there is, uh, they've held community meetings for three projects that could uh, use our entire uh, allocation of 172 in th those three projects. The, uh, the Oakmont project in SoCal on the Interlight um, Ministry site, the 17 homes in, um, across the street, and the 102 homes on the by right housing that uh, um, that the board uh, allocated uh, several years back, and so I think that we have a we will see this year how close we get to uh, 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 reaching the max. That's a what I just described is all taking place within one block in SoCal. 
So it's a lot of development in one area. So I'll be very curious to see how we end up the year uh, in this. This could be a year in which we, we get close. Thank you. Any other questions? Supervisor McChristian, you have a question? Yeah, I, I, not a question so much as uh, this is gonna be a, a real tough pull as we know. Um, this uh, last year, we didn't build more than 200 of the units that were uh, authorized uh, in our goal. And I think the same thing can be say, said for AMBAG and a regional basis and all too. And I just read a recent story in, uh, from the Associated Press, I believe, that uh, we needed to build in the state of California, just to show this is not just a county concern that we have, 165 housing units statewide to meet the basic need of, uh, of housing need of people in California, and only 85,000 of those were built. So um, in recent years, two generations, people have really tried to have slow growth, no growth uh, ideas, and that has greatly changed today to meet the needs of the people of uh, uh, Santa Cruz County. And I do hope that all of our 464 housing units and some of those uh, that would really apply to some of those in greatest need in assisted living, for instance, as uh, Supervisor Leopold just uh, mentioned, that uh, we're, they'll be built and we can demonstrate that we are really serious about providing adequate housing and at the same time protecting our environment in Santa Cruz County. But we have a huge issue in Santa Cruz County. We have a huge issue in housing in the state of California. All right, well this, this is a public hearing. Um, Chair, I just uh, just wanted to, for uh, my colleagues' uh, uh, edification, in addition to the 200, nearly 200 that I right. mentioned, there's another 71 affordable units in Live Oak, uh, which are gonna be, uh, they're, they're gonna propose application, doesn't count towards this goal. So we're trying very hard to meet the need. Right. The Supervisor uh, Caput. Uh, I'll just make a quick comment on, uh, we're, we're including uh, migrant uh, camp uh, housing also. Affordable housing does not, uh, um, deed restricted affordable housing does not have to have an allocation in order to go forward. So that would not, that would not need one of these 464 identified permit allocations. But it does provide housing uh, and some relief, J uh, just like the ADUs are not uh, included also in the report. Correct. Right, so I, I guess the only caution I would have is <coughs> uh, a knee-jerk reaction where we're going all of a sudden, uh, when the recession was uh, here, we didn't do much building at all. You know, we didn't do anything, hardly. And then now, uh, th times have changed and then it's like, we're gonna build all kinds of units and we're gonna, uh, what I'm getting at is we, we do have to protect what we have. Uh, it's a beautiful county and uh, it's becoming very unaffordable for a lot of people especially middle class and lower. So I guess all I'm saying is we have to look at the environment, uh, protecting what we do have as far as our environment and also build housing and, uh, and also protect farmland. So I mean, we, we have to be very careful. This is a big issue. Uh, we do have to address it but uh, at the same time, we have to protect what we have and make sure that uh, uh, Santa Cruz County remains one of the most beautiful places in the world to live. All right, this is a public hearing. We'd like to open up the public hearing. It's a member for, uh, opportunity for members of the community to address us on this uh, item. Is there anybody who'd like to address us? Thank you, Becky Steinbrunner, resident of Aptos Hills. Um, I looked through the report and saw the tally of the um, ADU numbers in, from 2000 to um, application from 2000 to current, and noted that the highest number of applications was for my area, the Aptos Hills. Uh, second highest was Live Oak and then the summit. So we're seeing more and more people wanting to put ADUs out in the rural areas, and I support creating affordable options for people and for homeowners being able to get a bit of income to, to pay their property taxes 
What I'm seeing missing in this report is what is supposed to be there, the assessment of the cumulative impacts of traffic, water, public views, and environmentally sensitive areas. I don't see anything about that in this report, and I did look through it quickly, maybe I've missed it, but I think that issue needs to be addressed, especially having this level of uh, increased impact in the rural areas on mountain roads and sensitive environmental areas. Um, I also wanna draw to your attention that there is on the um, Planning Commission's um, agenda for next Wednesday, a continued public hearing for the density bonus program that is being put forth by the planning department that would reduce a lot of the um, green space, traffic uh, parking requirements, um, allow greater height, greater floor space area of ratio of buildings. And I want to thank you, Supervisor Caput, for saying that we've got to, um, yes, we've got to, provide places for people to live, but we've got to provide a quality of life and maintain a quality of life and protect our beautiful place that we all love and this why we're here and pay special attention to the infrastructure that is needed to support growth. One of the issues being proposed recommendations in this density bonus is that developers would be allowed to delay the payment of their impact fees until after the units are built and occupied. That's backwards. These fees are meant to help offset and prepare for the impacts of their development, not, not do something afterwards, or maybe not even at all. I also want to draw to your attention in the San Jose Mercury News yesterday, there was a very interesting article about what may be the first legal challenge of um, the uh, SB 35, where uh, if a certain project meets the state guidelines, it cannot be denied. And um, I think we have to be very careful about something like that happening and guard our quality of life and the environment that we all treasure here. Thank you. Thank you, anybody else on this item? Okay, we'll close the public hearing and bring back to the board for action. Move, move approval. Second. We have a motion from Supervisor Coonerty, a second from Supervisor Leopold. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? It passes unanimously. I imagine we can do item seven very briefly. Yes, okay, we'll do item seven, which is consider ordinance amending, bear with me on this, chapters 1.01, 06, 08, and 2.02, 03, 04, 06, 10, 12, 18, 24, 40, 42, 45, 54, 56, 58, 60, 64, 70, 78, 80, 90, 92, 96, and 2.117, 121, 122, and 124 of the Santa Cruz County Code to address miscellaneous code provisions, correct typographical errors, and update agency titles and statutory references to return to the next available agenda for final adoption as outlined in the memo of County Council. We have uh, the ordinance clean copy and the strikeout underline for all the updates and all the exhibits. Chair, you may want to consider going into the auction business. I was going to, <laughs> I, nobody yelled bingo, and I thought I won on that right there. Um, Mr. Heath, are you here to present? The, all right. I am. Good morning. Good morning, Jason Heath from County Council's office. Uh, what you have before you is a draft ordinance to update the county code. Um, we don't think this has ever been done before. Uh, look from beginning to end um, in one setting that is probably going to take a couple of years to accomplish. Um, it is, uh, we're starting with uh, chapters one and two in volume one, and then we're gonna be moving through, continuing to move through chapters one and two. These are not all the changes that need to be made to chapters one and two. You're gonna see more in the coming months, Then we're gonna move sequentially through chapters three, four, up through uh, 12. Um, if you have any questions, I'm happy to answer them. I'm also interested in any feedback you might have if you think that there's a better way for us to present these changes to you, uh, a more usable way. We're trying to basically, the whole point of this is to try to update the county code to make it more readable, uh, to update statutory references, to correct typographical errors, and the like. It made sense to me. I appreciate the brief presentation. Any questions, Supervisor Leopold? Uh, thank you, Chair. Uh, thank you for the information and uh, presentation. Um, yesterday, I had the uh, pleasure of sitting in uh, with uh, several members of uh, county council in a discussion about uh, this very item. Um, I had uh, come about something else, but I was very glad to see that the, uh, the connection between the, the board's full support 
uh, for submission to the Human Rights Campaign Municipal uh, Equality Index. And uh, in the course of that conversation, we were talking about uh, the question of uh, gender identification. And I want to recommend that we, that as we start this, that we uh, uh, change the, the his and her to their, um, which I think is m more appropriate given our uh, evolving sense of, of how we talk about gender. And I think that should be reflected in, um, uh, in our county code. Uh, and so uh, I think that in the conversation that you said that if we make that change for these one and two sections, that it has to come back to us. Yeah, that would be an easy fix. And um, what you could do is um, make a motion to have me make that change and come bring this exact package back to you next week uh, for first reading. And so instead of saying the, the, the CAO or his or her designee, it would say the CAO and their designee. Um, issues like that uh, uh, help us move beyond the binary uh, in terms of gender, gender identification uh, and is more inclusive uh, to everybody uh, as to how they identify themselves. And I would hope that the board could support that. All right, well, we'll open it up to the community now. Are there any questions on this, on this item? You actually already spoke to this item uh, when you addressed this item during the initial comment period. I spoke to one of the changes, but there are others Th that, that was, I did not that speak to because I only you, had two minutes. But, you but I do want to protest that the Ms. ability of the Water Commission Ms. to do and Ms. Steinbrenner, you spoke to this item already. Please, please. You're, you're starting to disrupt the meeting, Ms. Steinbrenner. So please. All right, Ms. Steinbrenner. Thank you. Is there anybody else who would like to address this that hasn't spoken to this item yet? All right, so you now bring it back to the board. Uh, so I would make the motion to direct County Council uh, to uh, make the changes in language to, uh, 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 that doesn't uh, um, refer to specifically to, to, uh, uh, to gender and keep it more neutral and to come back with a revision. Second. At our okay. next meeting. All right, we have a motion from Supervisor Leopold and a second from Supervisor Coonerty. Ms. McCray, you had something briefly? I just want to say that this work has been on a list of mine for a very long time, and I'm very grateful that Jason picked it up. Well, I see how things run down to your deputy there. <laughs> <laughs> uh, we have a motion and a second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? It passes unanimously. The board will take a short 10-minute break because we have a 10.30 scheduled item. Just for those that are here for the 10.30 item, we're going to combine items 8 and 9 since they're uh, related and just hear it all as one item. We'll see you back here in 10 minutes.
Good morning. We're going to move on to our 10.30 uh, scheduled item. Just as a brief, what that, the, the 10.30 scheduled item is a combined item eight and nine. I'll just uh, briefly read them just so you can uh, be aware of what they are. But item eight is consider, consider adoption of a resolution to join, provide funding for, and appoint representatives to the Santa Clara, Santa Cruz County's Airport Community Roundtable as outlined in the memo of Supervisor Leopold. Uh, he has the resolution and the letter of Cities Association of Santa Clara County, as well as a letter of, a letter of Congress members Eshu and Panetta. And item nine was consider adoption of resolution to join and appoint representatives to the Santa Clara, Santa Cruz County's Airport Community Roundtable with conditions and take related actions as outlined in the memo of Supervisor McPherson and Coonerty. They also have a resolution for the Community Roundtable with conditions and the City Association Invitation and Bylaws. We're gonna actually start off this morning with uh, Andy Jordan. We appreciate Andy for coming. She's the Executive Director of the City's Association of Santa Clara uh, County. Thank you for being here this morning. Hi, thank you, um, Chair Friend and Supervisors for inviting me here to discuss with you the proposed roundtable. Uh, again, my name is Andy Jordan. I'm the Executive Director of the Cities Association of Santa Clara County. Um, why form a roundtable and how did we all get here? Um, I think that you're all pretty aware of this Select Committee recommendation. I won't go into that. Um, but the Cities Association became involved because we received a congressional request. Uh, for, to help find a long-term solution. This congressional request uh, came also from the Select Committee recommendation, and it is in re, um, direct response to community concerns. This, uh, the congressional uh, representatives were looking for a regional group. Uh, that is why we were sent the request. We represent the 15 cities of Santa Clara County. Uh, the ad hoc committee was formed uh, by the board of directors for the cities association and the ad hoc committee consisted of seven members of seven different cities um, in Santa Clara County. We also invited um, Representative McPherson and Representative Leopold and their staffs to participate um, in the meetings toward the end. The committee met six to eight times. Uh, the congressional representatives had requested that we form a, that we put together a framework similar to SFO Roundtable. Um, our committee, however, um, decided to look at roundtables all across the country. So uh, those are some of the roundtables that we looked at, but after looking at them, uh, the committee decided uh, unanimously that, the, that we should follow the SFO uh, Roundtable bylaws as, um, as much as we could if we were going to be working with the SFO uh, Airport and the SFO Roundtable. Uh, the SFO Community Roundtable um, is the first roundtable in the country, and it is known as the gold standard of roundtables. Um, uh, after Next Gen, roundtables popped up all across the country. And w if you go to the FAA and want to form a roundtable, most likely they will tell you to look at SFO. SFO is known to, uh, the roundtable is known to mentor other roundtables in, uh, in how to uh, work collaborative, collaboratively together. And while I'm not here to speak about the SFO round, for the SFO Roundtable or SFO, um, I do believe that they have the respect of the FAA uh, with their collaborative uh, work together. And they have shown that when a region works together, you can work with the FAA. The proposed Roundtable, um, and a Roundtable, uh, we'll go back to King Arthur's Roundtable, the Roundtable, Everyone, no matter who they were, had one vote. Uh, the idea was that everyone would learn to work together if they could trust each other. So our roundtable, the mission statement, is to address community noise concerns and make recommendations to the regional airports and FAA on noise-related issues. So the nuts and bolts of the roundtable, uh, we have an MOU to form the organization and we would be asking you to sign an MOU. The organization is similar to the SFO Roundtable, but in order to stand this up, we're asking that we self-fund it in order to get it off the ground. We will work with both the SFO and the San Jose airports. We will work with the FAA. We will hire a consultant and technical support to run the organization. Uh, there will be non-voting members, which will be the airport, FAA, and pilots um, organization or representatives. Any member may withdraw at any time but they would forfeit their dues if they do not complete the year. This serves as a forum for the public. 
Each jurisdiction would have one vote and a simple majority voting except for bylaws changes, and the bylaws could be re reviewed every year. And uh, for bylaws changes, it's a two-thirds of, uh, of, it requires a two-thirds of all members. So that would alleviate if, you know, one side of the, one county got sick and, <laughs> and the other all showed up. So the funding formula, uh, we looked at SFO to see what their, their budget uh, was, and their last few years' budgets have been approximately $280,000. So we uh, tried to, we came up with several different proposals and ended up choosing uh, the committee and then the board approved uh, uh, a structure and it's based on 50 cents for all, uh, 50 cents per capita, but for San Jose, because they're so large, 10%. But as you can see that if for every jurisdiction that uh, equated to about $700,000 and we were trying to get to $250,000. So uh, on the, the next screen shows you if every 21 jurisdictions um, participated, uh, it's the same ratio, but then it's divided, uh, it's proportionally lowered to, re uh, to get to $250,000. If everyone participated, uh, unincorporated Santa Cruz County, this fee would be about $25,000. Uh, so, but what happens when someone chooses not to participate? So you can see that San Jose is highlighted here. We remove San Jose and then the fee goes up uh, for everyone <coughs> proportionately. So as of today, the roundtable funding, uh, this shows uh, uh, the, the jurisdictions that have uh, decided to join and those who have not. Um, there are also spaces for, uh, well, I have included Campbell. Campbell is voting this evening. I've included Mountain View because I believe they will v vote to approve as well. So with this scenario, uh, the budget is, uh, your budget, your fee would be uh, close to $42,000. So lastly, um, uh, why we think this is a good idea and why we are asking uh, you to join us is that we do have FAA commitment. Uh, we do have commitment for, uh, uh, for moving forward even without all of the jurisdictions. SFO has told us in the SFO roundtable that the first year that they were operated, uh, they operated um, with only nine, ci nine cities. The next year, nine more joined. Uh, we do have congressional commitment that they will participate uh, send their staffers. I know that that's important. And lastly, um, this is the only regional solution that has come forward um, to address community concerns. And our this, the city's association board of directors um, it was unanimous. Well, it, not unanimous. It was 14 to one. Uh, that something needs to be done, and we do need to find a place for community <coughs> concerns to be heard. Um, with that, um, <coughs> I will let you ask questions or? <laughs> thank, thank you for coming, by the way, today again. Uh, are there any brief questions of Ms. Jordan? I know that we have a lot of people here that are interested in public testimony. Are there I'll any make, brief questions? Supervisor Caput, you had a brief question? I'll make a quick comment. Uh, we're, we're going to address this uh, problem and situation. It comes down to uh, who's going to represent us and also the cost. But uh, we are going to address the problem. So uh, what you have to say is very important today. You live in the areas that are you know, greatly impacted. Uh, South County, not so much. And uh, so, it, you know, I, I really want to hear what you have to say. And our decision is going to be based on who represents our county and how much it will cost us. Uh, thank you, Mr. Caput. Uh, thank you, Ms. Jordan. I don't think there are any specific questions of you, so you did a great job. Um, we're going to turn it over to my colleagues who have each submitted a uh, letter so they can introduce uh, their items. We'll start with Supervisor Leopold. Um, and also, uh, we know there's a lot of people here that are advocating specific sides. We want to make sure that everybody feels welcome, so to the degree that we're not clapping and cheering or booing or hissing. I mean, we have enough of that at the national level, at least at the local level, is trying to remember that we all live in the same community, right? Um, so. To that degree, if we can just be respectful throughout this whole process, we'd appreciate it. Sure. Thank you, Ms. Jordan, and uh, good morning, Supervisor Leopold, again, thank you. 
Uh, thank you, Chair, and thank you, Ms. Jordan, for all your work in helping uh, put together what this roundtable could look like. 5,906, 5,726, 4,891, 5,540, 6,673, 6,335. These are the number of complaints filed each day for the last six days. They represent hundreds of people, thousands of people who are affected. It's a non-discriminatory uh, effect. That it affects the most vulnerable in our community. It, felt it affects the well-off. Um, we've heard from so many people about uh, how they've been affected. When this started in March of 2015, um, uh, I would say that, uh, I could say my office was unprepared for the number of complaints that would come in. I had uh, people calling, emailing, showing up at the office, uh, stopping me in the grocery stores, uh, and coming to my uh, community meetings. Uh, as a supervisor, there's not much that we, we can do around flight path, or so I thought at the time. I reached out to Congressman Sam Farr. Uh, he was very receptive. Uh, uh, to the issues he worked with his colleagues. And uh, they had a great vision of setting up the Select Committee, which was uh, designed to uh, be representative of the affected counties by the new uh, jet path uh, created by the Next Gen program. In that process, in the, in the lead up to the Select Committee and through the Select Committee, I and my staff had to learn a lot about flight path um, and air technology. We had to learn about OPD, Class B airspace, waypoints, vectoring, DNL. I learned to check the IFP gateway on a regular basis. And I had to learn uh, jet path, like uh, Big Sur, Surfer, Bricks. Um, and I spent hours during that process uh, going to meetings, uh, on the phone with the FAA asking questions, talking to members of the uh, other members of the select committee to try to get a better sense not only of, of what we were experiencing and how to ask the right questions, uh, but also to understand the impact that, that uh, the, uh, the airlines and jet path had had on their communities. Um, at the beginning of that process, uh, we agreed on a system in which we were gonna make recommendations. And in the end, uh, the recommendations were made uh, with some uh, core values. Uh, there was a commitment not just to move the noise someplace else, uh, that uh, we wanted to return to a time when we had a lot less complaints about uh, the airspace. And we wanted to provide a forum that no matter what the FAA did, that we could meet with them on a regular basis. Since December 16, or November 16, when uh, the uh, Select Committee made their recommendations, uh, I or my staff have met with uh, uh, now Congressman Panetta uh, and his staff, uh, Congresswoman Eshoo and her staff. We've been on the phone, we've been asking questions. We've also reached out to the FAA and I've met with them. Um, I've, uh, we've written letters, we've uh, sent emails, we've been trying to find out about what's going on around uh, the FAA process. I've gone to Washington, D.C. Uh, to advocate uh, with uh, all of our members of Congress, including our two U.S. Senators. And I held a public, I attended a public meeting uh, with Congressman Panetta uh, just last year. And I'm committed to these issues because rarely a day goes by when someone doesn't come up to me and ask what's going on, when will their life return to normal, why can't uh, the FAA just uh, follow the recommendations, what's happening. I've had grown um, men and women cry on my shoulder. Um, I've, I've seen university professors ready to tear their hair out, and I've seen um, uh, lots of regular people who uh, don't, can't get sleep who now know with uh, um, amazing uh, uh, certainty about 
the Korean uh, jets that come over with um, uh, cargo uh, that can tell you uh, about the number of San Francisco, uh, LA to San Francisco flights that come at seven o'clock at night and at 10 o'clock at night and at nine o'clock in the morning. So when the concept of this roundtable uh, came up, I was very happy to see it set up. Uh, we were invited to a meeting. Uh, before that first meeting, I reached out to Supervisor McPherson. Um, there didn't seem at that point a lot of interest, but I uh, attended or participated in the f uh, first couple of meetings. And in fact, uh, when the first uh, proposal came out about funding, uh, which was about $100,000, I realized that that was never gonna fly in Santa Cruz. We're not Santa Clara County. Uh, and my staff suggested some formula of which a, a, a version of this is the one that looks like the, um, the round table has uh, used to have a per capita um, uh, model. Uh, at the, uh, as that process wore on, I reached out to Supervisor Coonerty to find out if there was interest, and at the time, uh, there, uh, he wasn't ready to, to deal with that, and I respect that. People have their, their priorities. But as we look at the creation of this roundtable, um, it, one thing is very clear to me. Uh, it presents the first opportunity since the Select Committee to regularly meet with the FAA I saw in that process what a difference it made when you can look across the table to the FAA, when you can develop relationship with staff, when they know they're gonna see you the next month. Um, it does really make a difference. Um, the activism of the select committee uh, served as an inspiration for the other round tables. Uh, and uh, um, I think it showed that if a dedicated group of elected officials work hard, ask good questions, uh, that we can uh, have an impact on the direction of a federal agency. So now as we think about uh, this, joining this round table, I think we should be clear about picking who the strongest advocates are. I don't think staff should be our, our advocates because they're very qualified and, uh, and dedicated but they don't, they don't use the megaphone in the same way that elected officials use. And we should be, we shouldn't go in with a defeatist attitude, saying this group isn't gonna do anything. We should go into an attitude that says, how can we make the round table affect the people in Santa Cruz County to make their lives better? How do I use this process uh, uh, to make a difference? And so, I think we should make appointments that, that, uh, that uh, can really advocate uh, for changes that will not just benefit a small group or a large group, but it should benefit everyone in Santa Cruz County. We were, there was a time where we didn't talk about airplane noise in Santa, in Santa Cruz County. And we should work to return to, uh, to that period. It is possible. The recommendations that we put in the select committee report were an honest attempt to try to, to meet those needs. Now some will complain that, that the FAA has said some things are not feasible, but that recommendation, all the different parts of it, is a belt and suspenders type of recommendation, which means we put a lot of things in it in order to uh, have the greatest likelihood that we would have the least amount of impact on our county. It was an honest effort and two-thirds of the members of the select committee supported it. So I wanna share with uh, the, uh, my colleagues and, uh, and everyone here, um, Ms. Galloway, if we could put that, uh, uh, it's up. Uh, this is a list using our GIS uh, system to look about impacts of the surfer route and the Big Sur route. For those who don't know, the Big Sur route was the historic path in which um, uh, airplanes flew over Santa Cruz County for decades. And the surfer path is the flight that has been in place since 2015. It has gone through a number of iterations. Each one has gotten worse than the one before it. This, is, uh, this uh, chart tries to look at uh, the number of people who live within 1,000 feet of the jet path and within 5,000 feet of the jet path. And it looks to see 
uh, of that, who lives, uh, how many people live in the unincorporated area and how many people live in the incorporated area. And it uses the census uh, block numbers. So as you can see, there's a very disproportionate effect on the number of people in um, the unincorporated area and there's particularly felt in the first district where tens of thousands of people are affected. This doesn't mean that other people aren't affected. And it doesn't mean that, uh, that uh, these are the only people that should be considered. But we make the point about looking at the unincorporated area versus the incorporated area because every city in Santa Cruz County has been invited to join this roundtable and have an equal vote with the county, with every other city, with the large cities in Santa Clara County. <laughs> So there's an opportunity for those in the incorporated area uh, to be represented on, on this round table. The folks in the unincorporated area don't, it's us, it's the Board of Supervisors. And we should pick representatives that re reflect the number of people who are most affected by this. And it, so it's no surprise that myself and Supervisor McPherson were the ones asked to serve on the select committee um, as well as representatives from the city of Santa Cruz and the city of Capitola, because they are the greatest affected. We should think about that in terms of our appointments. I would encourage the board uh, to join um, the uh, round table. Uh, I think it provides a great opportunity for us to have regular contact with the FAA and move um, the, uh, on actions that would uh, help people in Santa Cruz County um, and I would appreciate the support of my colleagues for myself and Supervisor McPherson to serve on that group uh, because I think that our constituents are the one most greatly affected and can't be represented in another way. Thank you, Supervisor Leopold, for the introduction. Uh, Supervisor <laughs> McPherson and Supervisor Coonerty. Supervisor Coonerty. Uh, so, there's a question before us today that's fairly simple, which is, do we join the round table? And if we do, who do we join? Uh, who do we send to represent us? Uh, I will say I am not convinced that the round table is a good, uh, a particularly good venue. I think there's an old saying in government, it's used all the time, you can see at the federal, state, and local level that when you have a problem that's difficult to solve, instead of solving it, you create a round table or a commission or a task force, so it gives the sense of uh, action without the consequences of action. Um, however, there's a, uh, there's, there's a real problem, and I've said this from the beginning, that the impacts being felt by the people currently under the fight path are completely unacceptable, intolerable, and should be alleviated. The question for me has always been from the start is, if the flight path is going to be moved, what studies are we going to do before it's moved? What what protections are we gonna have before it's moved to make sure that we aren't simply moving the noise to the other, to another part of the county over other people. Uh, the FAA, uh, the Big Sur flight path will never come back in its old form. The FAA has made clear uh, that that's what, that's the, that's their position. So in the new form, how do we know? And once it's moved, I think we all know <laughs> that the idea that the government is going to then study and then remove the flight path again uh, is highly unlikely. So it's likely to be the permanent uh, cause permanent impact to people in this community, and we just need some reassurance. I am I am okay with the flight path being moved to a different part of the county if for geographic reasons, if for whatever reasons, it's, a, it's least impactful, but I, we need the studies to be done ahead of time. Now the question before us today is, do we form an FAA roundtable? I think having a voice at a table, I'm skeptical when this county of Santa Cruz with 180,000 people has the exact same vote as Montesoreno with 3,000 people uh, at, uh, on the round table. However, it's, I think it's worthwhile to join to try to have some sort of influence over the FAA, keeping in mind that the FAA was designed with a mandate and a purpose to not be driven by local government uh, in their decision making. Uh, and so uh, I think it's highly unlikely that, that much changes, but, but I think it's worth giving it a shot and trying to do it. I would advocate that Supervisor McPherson, who's one of the 
most decorated public servants we've had in Santa Cruz County history, um, and who has constituents who are currently impacted and likely impacted, who also served at the, um, on the um, on the on the steering committee um, can would be a good representative. However, I also think that it's t it's we're a small community, and if we show up at the round table and the city of Santa Cruz is rep advocating for one thing, the city of Capitola is advocating for another thing, the county of Santa Cruz is advocating for another thing, um, it's not going to be an effective. Uh, we won't have an effective voice when we're already considered small and. Um, not as impactful as the entire uh, Santa Clara Valley with all their cities uh, and all their interests. Um, so I think over the long run, uh, the best thing we can do now is to look at having uh, a county staff member uh, from the CAO's office represent the county under guidelines that say that the, their number one priority is to reduce the impacts on people currently um, currently under the flight path, but without moving the noise over to another part of our community. Um, they can be uh, fair arbiters and bring the county together to have a united voice um, and a professional voice at this round table. Can I get a sense of how many people are interested in speaking on the item just so we can work on the time issue? I will, okay. Uh, uh, before we bring it up to the community, do you want to offer yeah, something uh, else? Maybe a, a question would be uh, <coughs> on, Thank you, the, by the way. on the wording of the, we're, we're on eight, eight, 8A, right? We're on 8 and, and nine. 9. 8 and 9. They've been together. combined into one item, yes. Okay, the wording, it does say uh, <coughs> uh, one member and one alternate who are local elected officials. Uh, to serve on the body. Does that mean it can't be someone that's not an elected official? So the present, there are two separate resolutions before you. The resolution from Supervisor Leopold speaks to it being uh, electeds with a member and alternate, as he had mentioned in his presentation, for him to be the member and Supervisor McPherson to be the alternate. Right. Under item nine, the resolution uh, calls for it to be uh, uh, Supervisor McPherson, Supervisor Coonerty, or a board designee, which could include a non-elected official. Uh, that could, so, so, the so it's up to the board, right. So it's up to the board to make a determination of which of these resolutions we would like uh, to adopt today. Okay. That's part of the discussion. Mm -hmm. and, and also, uh, uh, I'd like to say that both of them say to join, so the sort of the settled issue is, is whether or not the round table would be joined. Um, it's a question of representation from the board or from staff. And the, and the, and the, the cost is the same. And, and the co well, as, as Ms. Jordan uh, presented, the cost is dependent upon the number of, of uh, other municipalities or counties that join under the current construct. Uh, it's in the, the mid $40,000 range under the construct of everybody joining, it's in the, around the $25,000 range under a construct of most joining, it's in the $30,000 range. So it gives you an idea of um, at the highest end, I would say it's in the mid 40 range and at the lowest end, I'd say in the $25,000 range based on the presentation from Ms. Jordan. Okay, I'll, I'll listen to the public first, but I, d I did have a comment. I appreciate your passion on this. Uh, uh, Supervisor Leopold, and uh, that that is Im important when you're talking. But at the same time, I'm I'm wondering. Uh, this is one of those issues. Uh, watch out what you wish for. Uh, <laughs> so it might be better some other way. I, either way, we're going to have somebody that's going to speak on your behalf. When I'm talking about the behalf of the people that are affected by this. Thank you. Well, uh, Supervisor uh, Leopold? Yeah, it's a, uh, and uh, I appreciate the remark, uh, uh, Supervisor Caput. I, I kind of know what I'm getting into because I've been living in for the last three years. Okay. Uh, and uh, if I would have thought that when I was elected supervisor that I would have to know about all these things about the flight path, that I would have to become a flight controller, I might have thought differently about the job. But now I'm in, and, uh, and I've educated myself, and I've uh, spoken with so many people, I feel very passionate about uh, representing them. The other, the other, I want to make a point of clarification. Currently, the bylaws of the roundtable only allow elected officials. So, the, the, uh, 
we should have elected officials representing us with other elected officials. Um, the the idea that we're gonna we're gonna ask to join the group and then try to hope that they're gonna change who they're gonna allow to do it. I, I I think the best advocates are elected officials in this case. That's why I've seen make the difference, and uh, and I hope that we would appoint elected officials. Uh, and uh, I, why I respect our staff. Um, that uh, I think it would be better to have advocates there rather than bureaucrats. So. Okay, now we're gonna open it up for the community. I, I would encourage everybody to line up because that'd be useful. Um, and also a couple of things. If you already spoke this morning, because a couple of people did during the early uh, component, uh, that was it. Uh, secondly, we're gonna do two minutes uh, because there's so many people. Uh, the third thing is uh, we did receive a lot of letters and a lot of correspondence it's all part of the public record. We read them all, so just recognize that if you've already written us, uh, whether you feel it's necessary. And the last thing that I had said a minute ago, to the degree that we can remain civil and not, uh, that would all be appreciated. I know it's a lot, uh, but I appreciate you taking the time to come down here. Good morning and welcome. Thank you all for waiting. I'm Diane Matlock. I live in District 5. I urge you to join the round table and appoint Supervisor Leopold as the county representative. If Santa Cruz County had a voice years ago, we may have avoided the mess created by NextGen. Instead, you did not inform us of coming changes and we now have spent years trying to undo significant damage done to unsuspecting victims. You have a responsibility to not let that happen again. I attended every select committee meeting and strongly believe Supervisor Leopold is the only one qualified to sit on the round table. As vice chair on the select committee, he was engaged, did his due diligence, clearly mastered the FAA issues, and showed an unbiased approach to finding common sense solutions to complex problems. I live in District 5, and I don't believe Supervisor McPherson or Coonerty will fairly represent me or the many others impacted by jet noise. They have demonstrated a blatant disregard for the democratic process of the select committee and the decisions reached under majority rule. Their actions have made it clear. Their agenda is to undermine the select committee recommendations and stop the BSR overlay. The claim they want to make sure jet noise does not move is flat out insulting. If that was their concern, they would be fighting with the majority to move flight paths back as noise never should have moved in the first place. We need leadership that will work hard to fix what was broken and fight for future improvements, not stand in the way of progress. Their agenda has already been tried in public. The majority ruled, enough is enough. Supervisor Leopold is the only one we can all trust. His leadership and integrity is exactly what is needed on the round table. Appointing anyone else would be a grave disservice to this county. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> it, to the degree, uh, just so I can say, we will be here literally all day if you clap on every item, okay? And I think that you care more about the action than not. I, I just want to make sure that we show respect. Yeah. I, I understand. But I want you, this is supposed to be a welcoming place for everybody, even people that don't agree with you. I just want you to understand that, okay? Uh, and there will be issues that, that you may not be the majority on, and, and I want to make sure that you feel welcome in that environment too. So to the degree that you can respect that, that's what I'm asking. It's not a major ask. Good morning, welcome. My name is Neil Goldstein. I live in Capitola. I stand in support of the round table and of John Leopold. The question here is, do we live in a democracy or don't we? Right. Did the majority rule or does the minority rule? Do special interests trump democracy and Santa Cruz as they do in Washington? Right. That is the question here. Yeah. If there is a round table, who do we want in front of and representing us? Somebody who is involved, who is passionate, or two people who have vowed to tear down everything we have built in the last three years. It is an outrage to consider Mr. Coonerty, who is hiding in a closet the whole time, and Mr. McPherson, who has lied to our faces in the select committee, as even part of this. There is no honor there. Okay, the question is, are we going to be like the federal government who appointed somebody to the EPA simply to destroy it from the inside? We cannot do that. John Leopold is the only answer. We cannot appoint those who have vowed to destroy what we have built to this important position. Thank you. Thank you. Good morning. Thank you all for waiting. Good morning, my name is Susan Lambert. I live at the summit. All the stakeholders must be involved to bring about a solution to this problem. 
Only through the round table will you, our elected officials, be able to communicate with the airports and the FAA. Please don't let this opportunity to interact with them pass us by. That's why I'm asking that you vote yes to join the round table and that you approve the budget for it. On item nine, the proposal for the round table makes clear that its purpose is to continue the work of the select committee in order to successfully serve on it, our representative would have to support the work that the select committee began so that our noise concerns may be eventually addressed by the FAA. Bruce McPherson opposed the most important recommendation of the select committee that pertained to our county, namely the reversal of the surfer flight path back to its original location. He refused to support his constituents suffering under the surfer flight path after it was imposed by the FAA. Therefore, I believe he should be considered ineligible to represent us. <clears throat> Although I am a constituent of Bruce McPherson, I do not feel that he shares my interest since he doesn't support the decisions that the select committee reached. I urge that you select John Leopold as a more appropriate choice for our representative I therefore request that you vote no on agenda item nine. Thank you. Thank you. Good morning. Uh, good morning. My name is Alistair Fife. Thank you for the opportunity to speak. Uh, as you're hearing and as you're well aware, uh, flight noise is a very controversial topic. Uh, however, there are a few points of widespread agreement. No one likes jet noise. Uh, the noise has gotten significantly worse since the introduction, introduction of next gen, and because of uh, forecast increases in uh, traffic and congestion, noise will get worse. Santa Cruz County deserves a representative who will represent the entire county. Uh, as noted in yesterday's Senate editorial and as commented by uh, Supervisor Coonerty, one should not expect miracles, but cooperation with FAA and with the other jurisdictions who are participating in the new roundtable will guide how to mitigate uh, the noise and, and distribute it, uh, the noise that cannot be eliminated. Uh, by all counts, Supervisor Leopold has shown an outstanding ability to represent his district. However, his continued insistence on concentrating 100% of the traffic to a narrower corridor on the western side of the county does not make him a suitable candidate for this assignment. Uh, the FAA has repeatedly shown that currently, today, 50, only 50% of traffic travels over the ground track. The rest is distributed to always to the west. Uh, so thus, the current surfer track approximates the 50-50% solution sought by the select committee. Uh, they are uh, focusing on uh, approaches that will restore the altitude, the pre-next-gen altitude, and on approaches that widely disperse traffic uh, will be of benefit to the, all of the residents of, of the county. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Pfeiffer. We did receive your letter as well. Thank you. Good morning. Good morning, my name is uh, Lauren Githens and I live in the 5th District. I just want to uh, voice my su full support for the uh, proposal here to join the committee. Uh, it may not affect certain areas now, but it certainly can in the future, jet noise, so it's really important for everybody to be involved in this at this stage. Uh, I, I don't want to, I, I really don't want to be rude up here, but uh, Supervisor McPherson and Coonerty have put out a lot of um, uninformed and misinformation, misleading information about this issue. And I find it very offensive that uh, they would even attempt to be on this committee. And frankly, uh, Supervisor Leopold, really, just if you sit down in a conversation with them, is the most informed person on this subject. It's highly technical. This isn't something that somebody, a staff person, should just walk in on. This needs to be, uh, someone needs to know what's going on with this. And, uh, Supervisor Leopold has been the only one that has demonstrated a commitment, a real commitment, to return us to what we were before 2015. Thank you. Thank you. Good morning. Thank you for waiting. Um, hi, my name is Molly Gressley, and I have been a resident of Capitola with my husband and our five children for over 20 years. I speak today for our family, our Jewel Box neighborhood, as well as a multitude of families from the Opal Cliffs, Depot Hill, and SoCal Hilltop neighborhoods. We are now constantly bombarded all night and throughout the day by planes that are turning on their air brakes, air brakes right at the end of Capitola Wharf and flying thunderously right over our homes. Previously, there were virtually zero complaints because the flight path historically went over the less populated areas. 
We support a return to the previous flight, flight path and a quieter flight path plan for all county residents. We strongly support John Leopold, who has faithfully been part of this process from the beginning to remain a voting member of this council and the round table we're talking about. We are hoping for action and change. Thank you. Thank you. Morning. Hi, good morning, Derek Brown, Happy Valley. Uh, I'd like to appeal to the quote unquote neutral members of the board um, to essentially arbitrate what's become a, an ugly intra-county feud. Um, I think uh, Supervisor Leopold's uh, track record on this has been shown to consider the interests of all the citizens in the county, not just his own constituents. The proposal that he was uh, deeply involved in developing was basically to let's go back to the pre-next gen. And what that was was basically letting people live in the homes and properties they purchased. And back then, so the proposal now is, is not the, what we say, fix in place or screw in place plan, but it's let's just go back to where the people that knowingly bought homes under a low impact but active flight path get to live there. And the people that bought homes in a quiet area don't have to live in the insanity that has been dumped on top of us. That seems fair. That seems to take into consideration the interests of all the citizens in the county, not just a handful. Thank you. Thank you. Good morning. Hi, good morning. Um, my name is Debbie Hakeem, and I live in the foothills of Soquel. I'm here today um, asking you to please vote yes on joining the round table and nominating Supervisor Leopold to represent us. Um, we chose to live in this rural community for the peace and quiet. In our quiet area, we live in a canyon and any type of noise is greatly amplified. That is why these rumbling, thundering planes are extremely loud. The, noise loud, the loud noise from these planes run off and on around the clock. For me, the worst has been at night and early morning when I'm trying to sleep. The lack of getting a good night's sleep has greatly impacted my health, which I am sure others in my community have been greatly impacted as well. So I ask you today, why are we trading airline profits and noise for the cost of our health? You need to do something about this. So please bring back the peace, quiet, and health to our community and vote yes on the round table and yes for Leopold to represent us because he has been with Santa Cruz County from the beginning. Thank you. Thank you. Welcome back. Hi, my name is Dave Austin. I live in Soquel, and uh, I fully support John Leopold uh, as our, our representative uh, for a couple of reasons. One is there's a great deal of ignorance among the board members about the complexity of the airspace and the consequences of FAA actions. <coughs> so I saw a letter this past week from a board member who said half of the flights go over Capitol and half go over Santa Cruz. Patently, patently false. Every aircraft goes over epic waypoint over Capitola. So I'd like to ask you which of you understand the complexity of an airplane descending at 300 feet per mile versus 389 feet per mile. Okay, it's like going from the summit to Big Moody Curve at 50 miles an hour and not stepping on your brake. Is that gonna happen? No. The FAA put out a document last, uh, early last year that says they will increase the rate of descent to 389 feet per mile, which is what they did uh, starting over the bay. So what happened with us? Everyone here acknowledges speed brake noise increased with Surfer 3. Well, here's the reason why. This document contains the reason. And it's their proposal that they increased from 300 feet per mile to 389 feet per mile. Okay, we need John because John understands the difference between 300 and 389 feet per mile. I suggest Representative McPherson does not. He's not been in personal meetings with the FAA. He has not studied uh, flight paths nor flight procedures. And we've been with John through this whole painful mess. I've been to every one of the uh, meetings with the, with the elected representatives. And John is right there with him. And we need John to represent us. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Austin. Good morning and welcome back. Hi, hi, my name's Denise Stansfield and I'm from Happy Valley. 
I oppose agenda item 6037. I therefore very vehemently oppose Mr. Mc Mr. McCoonerty and Mr. McPherson to represent Santa Cruz County on the South Bay Roundtable. Please vote for inclusion in the South Bay Roundtable and representation by John Leopold. He is the most knowledgeable, dedicated, and represents all of Santa Cruz County fairly. Thank you. Thank you. Good morning. Good morning. Uh, I'm Barry Fitzgerald. Uh, I live in uh, Los Gatos in Santa Cruz County. And I also support the Roundtable and John Leopold. I'd like for a moment for you to all think back on, on the early days in your career when you decided to go into public service. And what were your ideals? Uh, and think about the democratic process that we've seen where we have a, ground, a grassroots organization growing up over this problem, holding many, many, many meetings, including individual meetings with the FAA, and coming up with a solution. And then along comes this attempt to cynically scuttle it by one person who never made it to any of those meetings, including in his own district in Santa Cruz, and another person who spent most of the time saying, gee, I don't understand, I don't understand, I don't understand, from the DS. The only person capable of taking that position is John Leopold, an elected official who will represent us throughout the entire county. Secondly, uh, with regard to the FAA and the, the round table, we've been offered a seat at the <coughs> table. And to turn that seat at the table down is absolutely crazy because then we have no say. Yes, perhaps uh, governmental policies don't function the way we would ideally want. But to cut ourselves off from the one ear that we have to the FAA would be absolutely crazy. So again, I would recommend uh, Supervisor Leopold to sit on that in that position. And please, look back on this democratic process and why you entered politics. And do you really want to be part of the dirty mess that we see all over the country that have, have tainted public service? Thank you. Thank you. Good morning. Good morning. I'm Barbara Rice. I live in Scotts Valley. I bought my home in 1990 when it was really nice and quiet until March 15th of 2015 and when um, I thought a plane was crashing and it is continued to be loud and noisy every minute and a half to five minutes 24-7. The purpose of the new South Bay Roundtable is to follow, on, follow up on unfinished business from the select committee. The decision to revert to the BSR has already been made by this select committee. That was a democratic process. It took years of work. I'd like to thank Supervisor Leopold for all his hard work as vice chair and his getting up to speed and having more knowledge when you speak with him about this than FAA, I don't know. It's really fantastic. Um, supervisors McPherson and Coonerty are dead set against the return to the BSR as they have expressed in a letter to FAA on December 11th of 2017, claiming that the select committee's eight to four, eight to four decision in favor of the BSR is not sufficient to justify the return to that flight path. Again, that was a democratic process. We must not give them a forum to continue to work against the will of the people. I support John Leopold being the representative from this county. He will represent all of us fairly. Um, he's extremely knowledgeable. Thank you again. Thank you. Good morning. Thank you all for waiting on this item. Good morning, Supervisors. My name is Bill Holt. I live up in the Las Cumbres community, very near to McPherson Peak. I can't say I would disagree with any of the comments that have preceded this. I think the comparison to the chaos and deceit in Washington is interesting, and I think the point of about bringing this back to the community democracy process is interesting. But to me, it's a more personal issue. And the fact that we'd had Bruce at Las Cumbres community to meet us, develop an intimate relationship, shows that personal interest. And because of what's been expressed, how Bruce has declined to respect the democracy process, I suggest that Bruce recuse himself from this activity. Thank you. 
Good morning. Good morning. I'm Julie Oak from SoCal. Uh, hello, supervisors. Thank you for your service. I'm here to support our county's participation in the round table. This is a bear of a problem, but we must come to the table where people with opposing needs are talking. My husband and I are directly affected by Surfer. We carefully bought a piece of property for its quiet in 2014, and since 2015, it's been under Surfer. Um, <clears throat> We attended select committee meetings in Palo Alto at great inconvenience, as did many people currently suffering under the esta surprising establishment of the surfer path. Mr. Coonerty and Mr. McPherson have not shown concern for those under surfer. They may have some legitimate concerns about the return to BSR, but the fact remains that the same concerns would apply to any improved surfer, and even if all things were equal between the two flights, which I'm not sure they are, the fact that BSR was there for 40 years makes it a much more fair choice than leaving surfer in place. I request John Leopold be our representative at the round table. He has attended many more meetings than anyone else, as many people have already said. I would also like to point out the number of people opposing surfer who tirelessly appear to meetings in large numbers, much larger than the other side. Thank you. Thank you. Good morning. Good morning. My name is Lucinda Swan. My husband and I have lived in our Santa Cruz home in Happy Valley for 35 years. We moved there for peace and quiet. Our peace and quiet was taken from us without due process and we want it back. Please vote to join the round table and please make John Leopold our representative. John Leopold is clearly more knowledgeable about the ins and outs of aircraft noise issues and has been steadfastly engaged in the process of getting the FAA to do the right thing. Thank you. Thank you. Good morning. Good morning. My name is Rosanna Bruni, and I live in Soquel. Um, I'm here to ask three things of you today. The first is that you join the round table. A few weeks ago, I visited um, Jimmy Panetta's round table meeting, um, or not round table, community, community meeting, and um, we spoke about jet noise and about joining the round table. And Jimmy felt it, that it was of utmost importance that the, the county of Santa Cruz join the round table so that we could have an ear of the FAA. The FAA has been very difficult to communicate with. He indicated that since the Trump administration, the FAA has become more closed and is more difficult to communicate with. And by b joining the round table, we'll have the FAA's ear and that that's an important thing um, for us to have. Um, two, I'm asking you not to put an unrealistically low cap on the, on the money that you're willing to spend on this um, adventure. Um, Thirty to $40,000 might be not enough. And um, as a CPA, I'm here to request that $75,000 be set aside for the round table as $75,000 represents one-tenth of 1% 1 of the county's 70, $775 million budget. If you're not gonna pave our roads, then in SoCal, I live off Rodeo Gulch that hasn't been paved in over 25 years, then please give us this win of appointing John Leopold as our representative. Thousands of hours have been put into, into understanding jet noise. It, it is such a technical issue, and you've heard that already, but we have engineers, we have aviation professionals, we have pilots as part of Save Our Skies Santa Cruz that are highly informed and have trained Thank John you. Leopold. He's the only one who understands. Thank you. Thank you. I wish we had 777 million available dollars. It's much more complex than that, but uh, we hear you. Good morning, welcome. Good morning, my name's William Green. I live off Skyline in Las Cumbres. And um, noise wasn't a problem at my house. I've lived there 38 years, and uh, jet noise wasn't a problem. And 
you go out, you stand on my south deck, and here's the BSR path, and you wouldn't hear it that much. <coughs> here's a surfer path over here. The problem is, is they're much lower. The airplanes are much lower, and they come, and you hear them. Now, my gauge of, of uh, how, what's excessive, before, bird noise was what you heard. When one of those surfer planes come over, that way outweighs the, the birds. And the other path, it didn't. There's a saying uh, that I like, um, if you don't have a seat at the table, then you're on the menu. So I, I support John Leopold to be on the round table. Thank you for that. Good morning, thank you all for waiting. Good morning and thank closer. you for hearing us out. Um, my name is Christine Green and I live off of Skyline Boulevard in the north part of the county. The airplanes, I have lived there since 1980. Until 2015, we had no problem with jet noise. Now it's a nightmare, day and night. And the Surfer 3 has only made it worse. We need someone to sit at the round table to support the entire Santa Cruz area. We have a lot of different areas and a lot of different people that are impacted. Please get a seat at the table. Please. Mr. Leopold has an approach to issues. He meets with his constituents. He listens. He thinks, he studies, he calls, he informs himself, and then he makes decisions. Please choose him to be the wise one to lead us on this matter. Thank, Thank you. Thank you. Good morning. Welcome back. Good morning. My name is Robin Brune. I live in the unincorporated area of Santa Cruz in Felton. I don't have a city council in Felton, and I'm supporting Bruce McPherson's uh, proposal, Mr. Um, with his colleagues. Um, I think it's an illusion to, this situation is a, an argument which is a kind of a not my backyard argument and the people, the majority in this room feel they've succeeded in getting the flight path not in their backyard. I think it's a fiction to, front you. It's Please. a fiction Please. to presume that we can return to 2015 with uh, equanimity. I, I, the flight plans have changed. Uh, Planes have gotten bigger, there's more air traffic, uh, there is no return of the 50s and there's no return to uh, complete peace and uh, in the valley. So I appreciate Bruce McPherson's proposal, it looks at the 10 criteria that was supposed to be evaluated and used before moving the flight path and they cannot meet that criteria. So this is unfinished business and that piece that's unfinished directly affects his unincorporated area. So I support him to uh, be on the uh, committee to address that area. It's a very technical question and concern and it directly affects his constituency. So I support it, him on the board. Thank you. Thank you. Good morning, thank you for waiting. Good morning, how are you? Um, so very quickly, I personally have 500 hours into studying this problem. There's hundreds of thousands of hours put in by this community. That's like 40 cents an hour for $40,000. I'm sorry, you have a lot of taxpayers who are very irritated and losing sleep and wasting time and you folks need to do something to the extent feasible. This is a really complicated problem. The, the attitude that somehow the FAA can't be changed, I think is not right. I think that that with the support of the Bay Area and this community, what the FAA is doing is wrong. It is illegal. If you read the U United States Code of Regulation, they're supposed to pay attention to noise. They're supposed to develop a standard that minimizes noise, and they have not done that. And we have the documentation in this county. We have professionals who have developed. We have a number of complaints that are being recorded daily. On the average, 500 to 600 complaints a day. And I don't believe that that standard meets the FAA criteria or that the, that criteria can't be considered arbitrary and capricious. And I think there's a, a, a basis for a suit, but before you go there, you do the political thing. And I think John Leopold's the only one in this community who's willing to do that. And I'm not saying 
move one or the other, but it needs to be studied, evaluated, and a good solution needs to be found, not, not, just not in my backyard. Thank you. Thank you for the comments. Good morning and welcome back. Good morning, uh, I'm Ron Pomerantz. Uh, good morning, board chair and board members. Uh, I feel ambivalence to Supervisor Leopold's resolution for the county to join the round table. Uh, on one hand, it seems like it could be a waste of taxpayer money, but for the county to be part of an ongoing organization that has influence with the FAA seems vitally important if the round table has that power and influence. I'm troubled with the language in the draft resolution that does not accurately represent the current situation. It's language about surfer. The surfer path represents an incomplete picture and it further states that, quote, the FAA supports the select committee recommendations. In fact, as the McPherson Coonerty draft resolution correctly states, the FAA has refused to accept one third of the nine recommendations, which were unanimously adopted by the select committee and were the conditions for any move of the flight path. We in the city of Santa Cruz and the San Lorenzo Valley already receive about half of the overflights. Dumping them on all these communities is neither progressive nor equitable. If the county wishes to join the round table, then it should pass a modified version of the McPherson Coonerty resolution. And I strongly prefer to see Supervisor Coonerty as the county representative to represent a balance of intentions. The modified version of the Coonerty resolution should include board instructions to any representative requiring environmental studies to determine impacts of proposed changes of any path flights, no shifting of the flight path to BSR unless all nine recommendations adapted unanimously by the select committee are carried out. Fundamentally, no area should shoulder the onerous burden of jet noise. Fundamentally, noise should be equitably distributed. Thank you for your time and thoughtful consideration. Thank you, Mr. Pomerantz. Uh, good morning, Councilman Robotorf. Thank you for joining today. Good morning, Chair Friend, Board Commissioners. First of all, I want to acknowledge your dedication to every time you come to this meeting room, you make difficult decisions. Um, whether it's train, no train, widen Highway 1, not widen Highway 1, and now Big Sur or Surfer. Uh, there was an article in the paper just yesterday, and I co-signed that article, and it was about what I thought was an attempt to bring this county together. It's obviously that this is a divisive measure, uh, and there is no solution. I think what's important to be stated here is that when that select committee, which I was a member of, got together, uh, we had no power, we had no authority, we were only there to make a recommendation. And I served on that committee with uh, John Leopold and Bruce McPherson, and we all entered that status not knowing anything about jet noise, and at this point, I believe all of us are experts, and I want to repeat that. We all have the same knowledge on that topic, so the reference that one person lo knows more or less than the other, I, I resent that. Um, as we move forward, you know, the, uh, the decision before you today is whether to join the round table, and as uh, Commissioner Coonerty acknowledged, at the first meeting I was not a big fan of joining the round table because we had met people on the uh, select committee who were on the San Francisco round table, which I believe is the first and formidable uh, body, and I don't think we could get a seat at that table, but they were very unable to accomplish a lot of things. But as I considered it more and it was talked to more people, I, I believe that it is a good move to join the round table because Doing that, as people have mentioned, we have no voice. And even if we can only make recommendations, we need a voice. The one thing I do appreciate is that uh, none of you in my six years of being on the city council ever come to one of my meetings and told us what to do in Capitola, so I appreciate that. So I wouldn't come here to tell you who to select. I just think it's a good idea that you join the round table. I will be joining as a member of Capitola. I look forward to working with whoever you select. And thanks again for your hard work. Thank you, thank you, council member. Thanks for coming and not telling us what to do for once. <laughs> Good morning. Good morning. Um, I'm here as a fifth district resident to complain to Bruce McPherson and the entire board of supervisors. Bruce McPherson and Ryan Coonerty have chosen to discard the majority decisions of the select committee with regard to the 8-4 decision to revert back to the legacy BSR flight plan. You both continue to push for a fix in place when the FAA has stated several times it's impossible to develop a BSR-like quiet co 
procedure on the server flight plan. I'm also disgusted that you keep depicting reverting back to legacy routes moving noise. The noise was moved to us from a path that was a quiet procedure. How does reverting back to the original no, uh, route move noise? That does not make sense to me. You continue to undermine the work of our congressional reps, the elected officials, and all the residents that spent their time in the select committee process. Now you're, in try, you're trying to undermine the importance of the communication with the FAA in the select committee process. Um, I think the article you printed in the Sentinel was shameful. To act like the round table won't do anything because it's not advancing your agendas, or that you're not gonna, the, the importance is getting in front of the FAA. They also want, you were trying to push Bruce McPherson as the one authority that had the most residents when we clearly saw today that does not have the most residents affected. Um, I think the difference in passion and commitment is clear. John Leopold spoke to his um, agenda before this started. Bruce McPherson didn't make a peep over there. Um, I strongly suggest that you have John Leopold be on this round table to support us. We trust him, he cares, he understands, he has a huge commitment and integrity, and that's the direction that we feel that we should get here. Thank, thank you. Him. Good morning and thank you for waiting. Hello, gentlemen. I wanna thank you for your public service. My name is Terry Leonard, I live up in Santa Cruz Gardens. I first noticed the noise like many of the rest of us. I was in my backyard and I thought there was a Mayflower moving truck coming down the street hitting potholes, although there are no potholes in my neighborhood. So that was the start of this uh, nightmare. And now we have Korean Airlines coming in late at night and I hear them all the time. So I want to go on to say that um, I support you joining the round table. It's a complex issue. We do need a voice. Uh, from everything I know and the meetings I've been to, and I've been to Palo Alto also, I think John Leopold has got his finger on the pulse of the problem, and I hope you can all work that out, and I hope you will fund as needed everything to keep this process going so we can get a resolution for the citizens of Santa Cruz. Thank you. Thank you. Good morning, thank you for waiting. Good morning, my name is Mary Gillis. I live on Coffee Lane. I've lived there for 35 years, and that's in District 1. Um, I, I can't really say more than the people here have said. I really appreciate my neighbors coming forward. I had no idea that this was um, affecting other people. I thought it was just me. So um, anyway, I do support John Leopold. He, he knows what's going on. He has a lot of expertise, and um, thank you all for being here. Thank you. Good morning. Good morning, my, my name's Grant Wiesman, I live in Happy Valley. Uh, question that came to my mind about this issue uh, the other day was, why didn't Supervisors Coonerty and McPherson represent their constituents about, uh, concerns about jet noise before March 2015? Um, my short answer, if I may, is that there wasn't any. I've lived in Santa Cruz for since 73. I've worked 30 years for the fire department, downtown, east side, west side. The only time I was aware that there were planes flying over Santa Cruz making noise, they weren't, was when we were doing our ladder drills and I'm up here looking at the tip of the ladder and I look, there's an airplane up there. I can't hear it and I wouldn't have noticed it unless I was you know, walking around like this. Simply there was no noise in previously to March 2015, and to jump on this topic, I, I understand the concept of political expediency, but you need to be honest with the public, and um, I just wanna conclude this by saying that I believe John Leopold is the man for this job. I've watched him go from zero to 60 in a very small amount of time, his, his performance on the select committee was outstanding. And uh, you also need to understand that change is happening. Uh, this, looking at the city of Phoenix and the reversion to the original flight paths that caused so much trouble there, that is happening, it has happened. So um, a, a putting people with a defeatist attitude towards the round table in that position would be uh, a big mistake and I, I hope you won't do it and I hope you'll put John Leopold in that position. Thank, Thank you very you. much. Good morning, welcome back. 
Hi. Uh, my name is George Wiley. Uh, I uh, would like to uh, speak. Uh, I'm the uh, President of Santa Rosa Valley School Board, and I want to say any potential benefits that might emerge as a result of our county jo joining the pr proposed Santa Clara Santa Cruz Airport Community Roundtable are questionable. After all, the SFO Roundtable has been meeting with the FAA for the last 35 years and has yet to affect a meaningful shift in FAA policies, procedures, or noise mitigation. Our precious tax Santa, uh, Santa Cruz tax dollars might be better spent on other local pressing issues over which we have some control. That said, if our county does elect to join the airport community roundtable, I strongly urge that this board adopt the McPherson Coonerty board, Coonerty board letter and resolution and reject the board letter and resolution submitted by Supervisor Leopold. Importantly, McPherson and Coonerty propose reasonable restrictions on both the funding and the potential duration of this project where Supervisor Leopold cites no limits, no such limits. Mr. Uh, Leopold has used the words, return to a time, there was a time, and some of the speakers have also said this, that will never happen, okay? The FAA was eminently clear during the uh, committee hearings that uh, next gen was the way things were gonna be happen going forward, uh, and, that's, and, and that's evidenced by th three of the nine criteria that were listed uh, by Mr. Leopold have been determined to be un, um, unfeasible according to the FAA. Next Gen is with us to stay. Uh, last month the Class B airspace was fixed, so there is now no difference between Surfer and Big Sur except who gets the noise. Um, please, please, excuse me, please. And finally, uh, if, it, in, with this, the way it is now, I'm sorry. I'm no, no, the, you can take an extra 15 seconds just for that, please. Uh, uh, moving the noise at this point would uh, again be in direct contradiction to uh, Congresswoman Eshoo's commissioning directive uh, to, this, to this procedure two years ago, which said that moving the noise from one community to another is not an option. Thank you, Mr. Wiley. Thank you. Good morning, welcome, thank you for waiting. Hello, my name is Jackie Rice, and I'm a resident a lot, um, of Felton community. And I just wanted to point out a few things. I don't have a speech written out, but first of all, I would like to, uh, the board here, I'm on the Santa, S S San Lorenzo Valley School Board. I understand protocol, and you can't really respond to a lot of these comments. But I would like to cons uh, support your adopting the resolution of having Mr. McPherson and Mr. Coonerty to be on this committee. It's hard to see $44,000 being spent on a committee when I just saw the, the second story group go through and I know they're losing their funding and that is vital to our, our community as well. I wish we had money for everything. The FAA asked that the underlining, when they first proposed the, the changes on their, um, actually it wasn't, it was the feasibility study. They asked that the underlying community be in agreement on any moves of the jet path. When the vote came, Santa Cruz County had four votes. We were two to two. We still have that disparity. I also would like to comment to the Honorable Mr. Leopold that in his uh, newsletter, he said, I'm glad to have the FAA is working on returning the flight back to this historic pack, path that was well accepted for decades. As we know, we cannot go back to the BSR flight levels. I lived in Felton for almost 40 years. I know what the sounds are. And I feel like this was deceptive because you know we cannot go back to that. It'll be a big sur, um, I mean a, a surfer type flight path. And I have more things from people um, that were on the committee that wish, on the select committee that wish that they had not voted as they did because they voted with it contingent on the nine uh, recommendations that you had everyone sign. It's an agreement, it's a deal. This is why I'm voting for it. And if they know that these weren't gonna be followed through, they would not have voted as they had. I do feel, um, uh, this is a community problem. On my very first speech at, this, at the very first select big regional meeting, this is all of us. So I would like to see something that benefits everybody, not just me or them or anything, Thank just you. something that helps everybody. Thank you. Good morning, welcome back. Marilyn Garrett, um, this does affect everybody. And um, I'm the first speaker hit the nail on the head. Do we have a democracy? 
do we have rights to be safe in our person and property and to regard a home as a sanctuary? Do we have rights to our health? And we should. Sleep deprivation is a well-known form of military torture. There's a lot of sleep deprivation caused by this first gen. And uh, I'm wondering how much power the round table will have. I'm thinking of Michael Parenti's book called Power and the Powerless. Are we being placated by the FAA? And why do they have more power than citizens? I think the problem is we're living in a corporate state and I'd very much like to know what corporations pushed through this next gen. It's obviously a disaster of the, to the quality of life and the health, uh, you know, as testified by all the, the complaints uh, you've received. Um, every time I hear next generation, I think it's more radiation, it's more pulsed radiation. So we're having this next generation, 5G, 4G, the flight patterns, this is all a health hazard and an assault to all biology, including the birds and the bees. Um, we just need to have the power to say, no, this is unacceptable, it has to stop. Thank you. Good morning. Good morning, my name is Ruth Siegel. I'm uh, from the Pleasure Point area, and uh, thank you for opening this up uh, for comments. I support the inclusion of Santa Cruz County in the San Francisco Around Table. I think it's a no-brainer at this point with the disaster that's been going on. John Leopold is the only one on this board that I believe is qualified to represent the entire county. Um, he's been through this process from the beginning, as have I. Um, He's been to uh, most of the meetings, all the meetings that I know of, uh, plus more. Uh, he wrote a more than fair proposal that was already voted on and accepted by the select committee. Uh, his proposal protects the rest of the county from the surfer disaster. And I just wanna remind everybody here, nobody under the surfer flight path had any warning. We had no say, we had no such committee, we had no such representation. This is essential that we have someone who's not knowledgeable, and knowledgeable meaning really engaged in the process from the beginning. Um, I don't believe that McPherson has done his part to educate his constituents, his district, about the facts and uh, misinformation that's out there. And I'm so sorry Mr. Coonerty wrote such an embarrassingly misinformed letter to the FAA that just, it's, it's, it's uh, just embarrassing. I'm, I'm really sorry about that. Um, <laughs> the county has probably already collected today from the new hosted rental permits applications, already probably collected enough money just today to pay for this <laughs> committee uh, to join the round table. Um, I'm still waiting <coughs> to be able to open my windows and sleep through the night in my own bedroom. Thank you so much. Thank you. Good morning, thank you for waiting. Hello, I'm John Glena, I'm, I live in Capitola. I just have to say about uh, with these flight paths now, they, all the planes have to come over the wharf, that's the waypoint, and they all have to hit uh, a, a certain airspace, so they're hitting their speed brakes, so they're accelerating to get into that, that band that they have to be in, and then they, do, then they vector later after they go further north, so we get 100% of them over us every day, and, uh, and I, I think that uh, John Leopold will be the fairest uh, to the whole county, but right now we get 100%, and uh, I think that he, the, you know, the, the, with the democratic process of the select committee, uh, I think he would carry out uh, the, uh, the recommendations that that, that whole process uh, uh, concluded. Uh, thank you very much. Thank you. Good morning. Thank you for understanding the importance of keeping our voice and joining the round table. We need to appoint John Leopold, who served as co-chairman of the select committee. 
My name is Rosemary Hirschbach, and I live at 742 San Miguel Canyon Road in Watsonville or Royal Oaks. I have been severely, severely impacted by the jet airplane noise. About 600 jet airplanes, more or less, fly day and night over my house, property, and surrounding area. I have lost my peace and quiet. I enjoyed for so many years. My sleep is interrupted every night by the jet airplane noise. I'm stressed out, and I don't, I don't have any energy due to the lack of sleep. I have lived at this address since the year 1979. <coughs> It had been nice and quiet until the next gen changes. The good and safe routes over Granite Rock in San Benito and Santa Clara counties and the Big, South, Big Sur route were changed by the FAA by new and noisy routes of surf and bricks. What the FAA has really done is to change the noise from one county to another. We really need to belong to the South Round Table so that the FAA can listen to our concerns. Thank you for everything. Thank you. Thank you. Good morning. Good morning, Roger Welch, Aptos. This has been a big problem, and I just pray that God will help you. Thank you. Thank you. Good morning, thank you for waiting. Supervisor Caput and friend, uh, you, it looks to me as though this is going to come down to the two of you, and so I'd like to explain for a moment what I think has been going on here, which has not been said at all. We are one county. There are people throughout the county who are affected by this matter. You've heard a large number of people appealing to you from one area to dump all of the airplane noise on to two neighboring districts, Mr. Coonerty's and Mr. McPherson's. Those two districts currently get half of all of the overflights. Half are vectored over their areas. This, the people here, and I understand their concern, want 100% of the noise moved away from them and dumped 100% on those two other districts. You've been asked to join a round table and have someone represent the interests of all of the county not just the people who want it all moved away from them. The select committee voted that the move to back, not back, but to Big Sur was conditioned upon all nine of the recommendations of the select committee being adopted. I have a letter here which I can pass out to you about that. Three of those conditions the FAA has refused to make. So if you are going to join this roundtable, and I frankly think that money should go to the homeless, to uh, uh, violence against women, to farm worker health, but if you're going to join it, you need to have someone on this panel who represents all of the county, and I think that means it's going to have to be one of the two of you. And it means that you're going to have to take the following position for the county, that the recommendations by the select committee, which required all nine of those changes to be made before there's a flight path move must be carried out, and any noise must be equitably distributed, not moved from Mr. Leopold's Thank district you. to 100 percent to you. the others. Thank I you. urge please. you to remember. Please. Thank you. Please in the audience, but thank you, sir. You're out of time. Good morning, and thank you for waiting. Good morning. I'm Cheryl Poland. I'm a Los Gatos resident. Um, Chairman Friend, I feel the need to remind all of you that it was the failure of this board to notify the public of the impending changes of next gen that deprived us of our rights to file timely complaints against it. Because of your, not yours personally, but because of this board's dereliction of duty, tens of thousands of us, our quality of life, our property values have been destroyed. It's your duty to rectify this by joining the round table to give Santa Cruz County residents a seat at this table. It's your duty to nominate John Leopold as our representative. His demonstrated leadership at the select committee and his depth of knowledge about the, the jet noise issues make him the absolute best choice. As a 20-year 5th District resident, I'm appalled at Supervisor McPherson's constant attempts to undermine the democratic process 
that our congressional representatives put in place for the benefit of residents across the region. It's the duty of this board to fully embrace and support the majority decisions of the select committee, which you, by the way, agreed to. We live in a democracy. It's time to respect the people and do the right thing. Thank you. Thank you. Is there anybody else that would like to address us? Please. Hello, and thank you for being here. My name is Brian Anderson. I live in northern uh, Scotts Valley. Um, on a bad day, I can watch the planes go like this, and this, and this, and this, and uh, that those are the 9,000 uh, plane complaints days. Uh, anyway, to put a little perspective on this, uh, a couple years ago, I was having a, uh, sitting at a barbecue on the coast of uh, Alameda, and my cousin can see the Oakland Coliseum, and we're purely as close to an airport as you can pretty much get. And I enjoyed the time there. The, the uh, air noise was not significant. So I'm looking at planes constantly in Alameda, <clears throat> not hearing them that much. And then a couple of weeks ago, my wife and I were in uh, Jack London Square, Oakland, and I found peace and quiet there. And you probably all know where that is. It's, again, plain sight of uh, Oakland Airport and uh, SFO and uh, Cal, Caltrain, actually. So um, I'm gonna say, John Leopold, please join the uh, round table and avoid, um, I don't wanna call it spin, but uh, I think there's some misinformation. I'm an electrical contractor. I've worked for a lot of people in the mountains. I've queried all of them what the old Big Sur route was like. They said, not a problem, never. So I think there's some uh, better, lack of better word, spin data coming around by some uh, pseudo professionals, and I think that needs to be evaluated. No one wants to dump all their problems on everybody. They didn't have a problem before, but if we have to distribute some, and I could take, I could take a joint er, uh, jet every 10 minutes, but every minute and a third is unbearable. So if we have to distribute, but maybe that's the way it has to be. I know that opens up a whole different can of worms because you just can't move back to Big Sur. But uh, again, I never got any complaints from people in Bonnie Doon, Felton, everywhere. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, well we will uh, close the public comment period and bring it back to the board. I assume everybody wants to comment, so we'll just go down the line, start Supervisor of uh, Coonerty, then Supervisor Leopold, and we'll just work our way down. Sure. Supervisor Coonerty. So first of all, thank you to everybody for coming out and thank you for your advocacy, no matter which side you are on, and making sure that our community's uh, concerns are heard in, at, at, in this process. Um, so I've known Supervisor Leopold for a long time. He's, he is, he's incredibly knowledgeable. He's incredibly uh, effective. He's incredibly tenacious. If I was his constituent, I would be very happy to have him uh, represent me on this issue. Um, we all get to deal with that tenaciousness uh, almost every Tuesday, <laughs> mostly for, to the game, sometimes, uh, sometimes to our loss. Uh, but um, I think I, there is no way that he can be a fair representative for the entire community. If I, if, and, and let, me, let me say two things. One is, I couldn't be, if I had hundred of, hundreds of constituents and I had constituents crying uh, and demanding action, I couldn't be a fair representative for this entire county. And if, I, and if you want proof, you can look at the select committee's recommendations which said that they incorporate the criteria below. And then it says, uh, and include the following criteria criteria, and it lists nine criteria. It doesn't say this is belt and suspenders and if you can get three of six or six of nine, then it's okay. It, said, it says in order to move the flight path, in order to have that democratic vote of the supermajority, you need to have all nine criteria. We now are in a situation where the FAA is saying that three of the criteria cannot be met and it's possible that there will be more criteria that can't be met. So that mandate is premised on this nine criteria. So I don't think Supervisor Leopold can represent my constituents and I've heard from my constituents to say that they, um, that they, that they uh, have concerns. Um, I, I don't think I should represent and I would, I would think Bruce McPherson would be a great representative but I understand the concerns. So I'm gonna put, pass out a motion that I think tries to get us 
a countywide support, which is uh, this is a motion for the Santa Cruz County to join the Santa, Santa Clara Santa Cruz Community Roundtable and direct the CAO to sign the MOU with the following added conditions. One, the county representative uh, will be the CAO or his designee from the CAO's office. Two, the county will join for one year, then the CAO will, will evaluate the effectiveness and benefits of participating in the roundtable before continuing its membership and submit this information information to the board. Uh, three, the county, uh, the chair of the Board of Supervisors will write a letter to the FAA and our congressional representatives requesting that the representatives from the FAA and the effective con congressional districts attend all roundtable meetings as they represent the fed federal entities who hold the authority to implement uh, recommendations generated by the roundtable. And four, that the CAO or designee as the county's representative on the roundtable represent the county of Santa Cruz with with the direction from this board that the representative work to uh, to relieve the immediate impacts of jet noise for those currently experiencing the impact without moving the noise over another part of the county. No. No. Hold on, please, please. All right, so we have a motion. I know we're gonna be considering a number of things up here. Is there a second to the motion as we move on to this continued discussion? I, I, we do have a motion and a second, but we're gonna, we're gonna have a lot of discussion. I imagine we'll have other things uh, continuing to go on. Uh, is there more Supervisor Coonerty on this? Uh, no. Uh, okay, Supervisor Leopold. Uh, thank you, Chair. Uh, thanks everyone who came out here today. Uh, I've kn gotten to know many of you uh, because we've been on this long journey together. Uh, you attended uh, the meeting when it was at the Santa Cruz Civic, when 600 people showed up. You attended, the, of the, many of you attended a vast majority of the meetings that were held over in Palo Alto. Um, it made an impression upon uh, the select committee uh, because of the, t the tenacity uh, of people. We heard during that select committee pr process a couple of things from the FAA. One is they did not understand the impact that they were creating on Santa Cruz County. Two is they told us that at, at, when, once they understood what was going on, that the terrain um, and uh, the geography uh, and the concentration of people were fundamentally different than what it had been under the Big Sur path. Uh, and that some of those things could not be ameliorated. It has been suggested that with the fixing of Class B airspace that there is no difference uh, uh, between the Big Sur and Surfer. And I think that that shows a real um, uh, disdain for the information that we received uh, during the select committee process where we got many modelings of uh, n uh, noise impacts as part of that process. I have a whole folder in my office of all the different modeling that they had done at our request. Um, and it's why we uh, put in the recommendation that the new uh, path would have an equivalent uh, or less DNL noise exposure than it was before the change in jet path. We understood that. The DNL uh, monitoring isn't a perfect way. We, we, would, we would all do it differently. This jurisdiction does, uh, measures noise differently. Uh, but we were very sensitive to the fact that uh, it should be at least as quiet as it was before, and it should hopefully be less noisy than it was before. So uh, it's been suggested that, that somehow a 50-50 allotment is, is fair. Uh, you should know that the select committee did have a, uh, a, re uh, a proposal uh, from a member to do that 50-50. Not only is that technically difficult, uh, FAA would maybe say impossible, uh, but it doesn't address the real impacts that uh, are currently being experienced by uh, people under the surfer route. Um, it's, it's basically acknowledging that you will suffer and you will suffer permanently. So it's technically not possible and, and uh, it's, it's, it's not just in any way, shape or form. So let's look at w what the three recommendations uh, are. When I said belt and suspender is we were trying to do everything we could to, to make it less noisy. Um, 
so they, uh, one of these pieces was use flight altitudes at least as high and preferably higher than the historic VSR procedure along the entire route. We had a long discussion uh, uh, with the FAA. We also have, uh, I have many, many discussions with member of the committee about uh, trying to set an, an, an absolute number. But one thing that I've realized is that the, the, height is, uh, the height is not the only thing that makes the difference. Um, it's the procedures that make a big difference. And what we were told by the FAA at the time was don't set a number because what if we can come up with a path that is less noisy but doesn't meet your criteria, it could create procedures and we would meet your criteria but then not be able to meet the noise impacts. So they have said that they can't make it higher than it was if, uh, on the historic BSR route, but that doesn't mean it's gonna be noisier than it was on the BSR route. So let's look at the, the number four, which was uh, utilizing a new BSR waypoint equivalent to Eddy and at or above 6,000 feet to ensure flights cross the Menlo waypoint at or above 5,000 feet and maintain idle power over Heman. I point that out to my, uh, the, to our CAO and you would have to get to know what Eddy, Menlo, Heman um, are and there's a bunch of other waypoints. Good luck with that. Um, so the Menlo waypoint doesn't exist anymore. They changed that. And in fact, before they changed it, they actually gave a recommendation to move it up um, uh, to something above 4,500 uh, feet. So while they, they say, while they, they have questions about the feasibility of this one, uh, the, the real impact about this was for the Menlo waypoint over Palo Alto. And um, this has no effect on Santa Cruz. It's what you do when you're trying to build a political consensus is you try to meet all the needs. So the, the, this was an important need for, for members there. The last one was will be subject to future capacity limitations, particularly during nighttime hours and when vectoring exceeds current levels. Again, this was put in at the request of people outside of Santa Cruz County because they were trying to deal with the difficult I issues of, um, of nighttime flights, especially as they come in from the west, um, uh, primarily through uh, Woodside. Um, at the time that we made this, uh, the FAA representative, Steve May, questioned whether he could, he, at the meeting where we made the motion, he questioned whether this is something that the FAA could do. This was a last minute addition uh, by, uh, by a group that were interested in, in, in proposing this recommendation. So w when I look at what's in the actual recommendation about having noise modeling that shows that the new procedure will be less noisy than it was on the BSR route in 2014, that we start from a point over the Monterey Bay and reaches the shoreline at altitude no lower than 12,500 MSL. Uh, that incorporates modifications to Class B airspace. That uses flight altitudes as high as possible while still allowing idle power flight. And is designed to avoid the use of speed brakes. Those, for those of us who have been uh, working on this issue for three years, know these are the critical pieces um, in addressing the noise concerns that have been out there. When I read off uh, earlier today the number of complaints in the last six days, I should share with my colleague that these are low numbers. That, this, that if you look historically over the last three years, the September, October, the numbers go down because the, 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 um, the, uh, the, the atmosphere, the clouds, the fog, all play some role in this noise. Um, and it'll go up. I mean, there was in the end of uh, August uh, up to 9,000, and we've gotten as many as 11 or 12,000 um, uh, points a day, or complaints a day. <coughs> so um, I have a great appreciation for our county administrative officer or his designee. I think we have a very talented uh, staff. I don't think they're the right ones to do this. 
I think that when you're advocating with other elected officials, your most powerful advocate is another elected official. Yep. And and to, to, to try to just throw up our hands saying, well, we can't make a decision, so we'll just pick the, 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 uh, the, uh, the CAO is really a setup. Um, it's a setup for people who uh, won't get the advocacy they need. And it's a setup for the staff who then has to figure out how to, to um, uh, uh, balance all the things, and when you're there at the meeting and you have to make a decision, and we hasn't talked with members of the board, what are you going to do? That's a, that's a that's a great way to uh, have a short career um, at the board of supervisors. So, as I pointed out, I think that there that there are some of us who have a lot of skin in the game. You're showing up here today does point out that the people who live under this path right now are, are informed, desperate for change, um, and uh, I have no doubt that at these roundtable meetings we're going to see you and, and other people in red shirts who will be uh, uh, advocating for that point of view. Um, as my chart showed, there are two districts of unincorporated residents that are mostly affected mostly in, in my district under, the, under these. Tens of thousands of people are affected. Supervisor McPherson also has a lot of people in the unincorporated area. Yeah. But be clear, this, the city of Santa Cruz gets represented, the city of Capitola gets represented, the city of Scotts Valley gets to be represented, and the city of Watsonville gets to be represented. Those, those incorporated communities will have to choose. It's relatively inexpensive for them to participate. Um, I think the unincorporated residents need a strong advocate. I am prepared to be a, a, a strong advocate. Um, I would love to have Supervisor McPherson as my, as, as my backup, and I do not support this motion that would turn it over to a bureaucrat to, to, to make important decisions that affect the lives of everybody here. And so I don't support the motion. Thank you, Supervisor McPherson. Uh, thank you, Chair. Um, for those of you who have uh, suffered by the terrible jet noise since March 30, uh, March 2015, um, I sincerely believe a grave injustice has been, to, been done to you. It's um, unfortunate that next, the next gen procedure was implemented in March of 2015 in the first place. It never should have been in the first place. Clearly the distress and disruption to your lives and many others, and you deserve relief from a situation that was impo imposed upon you without any warning. And uh, we didn't know it up here. You didn't know it out there that I know of. Yeah. The stress that has been caused by many of you point to the blame for the situation and direction other than, a, than toward the FAA is improper. Uh, that's where it should be pointed to. Why did they do this in the first place? It's caused misinformation and repeated, to be repeated in the form of some harmful and really um, misleading accusations. I think both sides would probably say that. Before the select committee voted to move Surfer uh, to Big Sur, there was a motion on the table to ask the FAA to come up with a flight path that the, had the least impact of our community. A flight path that had the least impact in our community. I supported that motion and it lost. But it's important to know that three out of the four representatives on that committee from Santa Cruz County voted along with me. The reason was, was simple. We knew that the FAA was the only authority that could fix this problem. I respect the, aside from what comments have been made, I do respect the process that led to the select committee's recommendation, 98% uh, of which were approved unanimously. The only recommendation that was contentious was the eight to four vote to move from Surfer to Big Sur. And our community obviously uh, it continues to be divided on this. But we all agree on one thing. No one in our community should suffer like those currently living under Surfer 3. 
Since the select committee ended, I've been asking members of Congress and the FAA some hard questions. They chose their answers very carefully, especially the FAA, and so far this is what I've heard is true. The FAA cannot meet, as you have heard, three of the nine critical criteria the select committee voted unanimously to incorporate to move the path. The FAA may not conduct a full public environmental NEPA, National Environmental Protection Agency, review of the new procedure. That's really troubling to me. They should have done that in the first place. The FAA is solely in charge of this situation irrespective of the select committee's recommendations. I will support joining the round table and continue to ask questions that I hope will add to the transparency and the community conversation. And I will continue to push for our community to work together to solve this problem together. It's something that we had no warning that was coming to us in this degree for sure. And it's something that uh, we need to resolve together. And that's why I'm supporting uh, the Supervisor Coonerty's motion. Thank you. Uh, please, please be respectful. Supervisor Caput. You bet. Uh, yeah, I'm, this, this is a kind of a tough one. I'm gonna try to explain it as quickly as I uh, possibly can. Um, certainly, um, Supervisor Leopold is qualified. Yeah, and certainly he has the passion. What, what surprises me is the negative comments and it, it kind of it kind of hurts a little bit because I don't like watching what's happening in Washington because somebody has a different opinion and by what I don't like is the questioning of the competence of other supervisors up here on whether or not they could do it or whether or not anyone you know we appoint can do it. So I, it, it, it kind of, uh, we, we have to have a respect for difference of opinion. And um, the, the tension in the room is basically over one thing. We're, we're all agreeing on two out of the three, right? We want a representative. Uh, that we're gonna pick, but uh, that's the difference. Uh, we are gonna participate in the round table. We're gonna pay for it. We're gonna discuss that. But to question the competence of the other supervisors uh, is kind of a turnoff to me, to be honest. I, I've been the only one in this room that has been for something uh, and the other supervisors don't agree. Uh, when we leave up here, I can't remember, maybe maybe once it's happened or twice, but they never questioned my competence uh, for the opinion I had. So that's, the, you put me in a tough situation here. If I were to go along with the first, prop, the first proposition, I'm almost saying that uh, two out of the five up here are not competent and not qualified to actually represent us on the round table. Uh, and I can't do that, I can't do that. And then um, it's, uh, I know with the, uh, I'll give you just a personal antidote and then I'll end it. Uh, with the Pajaro River, that's a big issue in South County. That's the number one thing for neighborhoods on whether or not they're gonna be flooded. Uh, I could argue passionately, I should be always the one at the forefront, being the chairman of the Flood Protection Board or whatever, and that I'm the one that should be actually always uh, at the forefront. But when the board appoints somebody else, and I, I trust them that they're gonna look out for what's best for everybody, they're not gonna turn their back on your area. You might think that, but I, I, don't, I, I don't agree. So if they pick somebody else to represent uh, the county for a South County issue, the Pajaro River, I respect it and I work with that person to try to make sure we're gonna get the flood protection we need. I don't say the other person's not qualified. I don't say the other per person is not competent. So I, um, I, I'm just kind of a little bit hurt by the uh, tension in the room and, there, and I, you know, I trust our 
county staff also to stand up and actually represent what's best for the whole county. Why don't you ask Thanks. how many? Please. How many of the Please, we've already had public comment. Here. We've already had For public comment. Please, please, we've already had public comment. We, we've made it pretty far with a decent amount of civility if we could try and get through the whole thing. And it, we recognize, I think the board recognizes, um, uh, as Supervisor Caput said and Supervisor Leopold eloquently said, the amount of tension and, and issues that are associated uh, with this. Uh, there are, but as Supervisor uh, Coonerty also noted, there's mutual exclusivity toward this decision. When I've met with some of you uh, and asked point blank, do you feel uh, whether one of my colleagues could represent your interests, um, I was told no. And when I've received phone calls and letters from uh, some of my colleagues' representatives and said, do you feel like another one of my colleagues could represent your interests, they said no. There was no, and so uh, the board then is, is put in a situation where there is no um, easy solution of where somebody's going to feel like leaving here today that they uh, would be represented by any, any individual member that would be selected, uh, which is tough. I do appreciate uh, that this motion doesn't arbitrarily set a low budget. I, th I think that um, the numbers that were provided from uh, Ms. Jordan were reasonable, even if no additional people join. I think. Uh, the county should be able to contribute somewhere in the 40,000-ish range without any issue. Um, I don't know whether or not uh, this group will have any true influence, but in some respects, I don't think that's really what matters. I think that uh, abdicating the responsibility to not have a voice at the table uh, would be a mistake, and I appreciate that there's unanimity that people feel that we should join uh, the round table here. I do have... Uh, what is kind of a technical question, I think, for the CAO. Um, I understand in a previous conversation with Ms. Jordan uh, that there was interest in allowing people to be able to participate from here remotely so that people don't continue to have to drive over the hill. Uh, is there a way that we could accommodate technologically and otherwise that something be held here so people could actually provide direct input into uh, the round table from here and actually be heard from here without having to drive over the hill uh, and the, the representatives that are selected by the cities and the county be able to participate from these chambers in a way that could actually do it. Uh, yes, I did uh, talk to um, Ms. Jordan about that and she did confirm that she felt it would be possible if we requested that to have a remote access to the meetings from these chambers, for example. I mean, that, that, that to me, that's, that's good news. I feel like uh, Supervisor Leopold noted the fact that people, uh, so many of people that are in here today are also willing to drive over the hill degree. I think we'd have even greater participation if people knew that they could come here to participate in the roundtable discussion directly uh, and have their input provided remotely to uh, the live meetings. Um, I will say that uh, I think that point number four on the motion seems like it was already addressed by Ms. Jordan. I, I don't know if it's... Uh, I mean, if it's important, we can maintain it, but it, it, she had said that in her presentation that there would be members of the FAA and the congressional district staff already attending. If, if a letter just reiterating that is important, that's, that's fine, but I think that that's something that's already uh, been uh, sort of decided. Uh, we do, uh, do you have additional, do you have something additional? Well, I just, I'll, I'll wait till you're done. I just had uh, a uh, couple go ahead. questions. Go ahead. Well, I mean, um, uh, it appears as though you're supporting the idea of having the CAO or his designee, uh, but the bylaws of the roundtable say elected officials. Yeah. So, um, uh, well, are we interested in joining this group or not? Because right well, now, uh, staff would not be seated as part of that, uh, that, that. Yeah, I understand, and, and that's, that's an important, that is an important point to point out. In my, in my conversations with Santa Clara County, and I, I, I um, please, um, I understand that, that other jurisdictions are actually making the exact same uh, movement toward doing exactly that, uh, making their membership contingent, of, I think Ms. Jordan has left, unfortunately, but uh, making uh, their membership contingent upon that, with, I mean, the assumption would be uh, Santa Clara County, San Jose, and other locales have already made uh, that known that that is also what they would like to do is have that flexibility. 
Uh, well, so uh, I, I appreciate that they've sort of make it known, at least according to the rules as I understood it from uh, Ms. Jordan today, I'd have to check the bylaws, that it requires a two-thirds vote in order for that to happen. I'm not sure how many cities there were, and I know that if we had a staff member, we wouldn't get a chance to vote on that. So uh, I'm, I'm, I'm pointing out, I, I understand the, the, the hesitancy of my colleagues to, to choose a strong advocate who's been effective um, that, uh, that, 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 that uh, concern that that representation won't, um, uh, won't be for the entire county, although I'm the only person who has represented from at least three districts that, that have said that they're interested in having me, and I have written a letter to the city of Santa Cruz when, when they had a problem in February when the FAA just changed the flight path, I wrote to them and said, let's work together because nobody should be affecting this. They never responded after the flight path went back, but that's another thing. But we need someone at the table, and I appreciate that we'll have uh, a, a means for people to participate in a meeting remotely here in Santa Cruz, so these folks don't have to spend hours of their day. But it seems to me the county representative should be at the table. That m my experience says, if you want something done with the FAA, you got to be looking him in the eye. Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, nobody was mandating that they be held remotely. It was just a statement that, uh, for accessibility purposes, it seemed like something that would be advantageous. But I yes. understand that point. So Can we, we do uh, clarify anything then with the uh, county council on the the issue of elected official or not an elected official. Uh, is anybody sure. else on that board, they're not elected officials? Right, so right now, as Supervisor Leopold noted, the current bylaws state that it must be an elected official. There are a number of jurisdictions that have not joined, that are considering joining, that are in the process of joining. Uh, and they're pretty major jurisdictions, like Santa Clara County, for example, and the city of San Jose, which are the largest financial contributors and some of the largest uh, participants historically, that are making their their membership contingent upon allowing the flexibility to have a non-elected official participate. So it's, it's anticipated, but Supervisor Leopold is correct, those bylaws have not been modified. It is anticipated that they will be modified in order to accommodate that, just given the size and scope of those jurisdictions that are interested. And on that round table, are the congressional representatives expected to be at the round table? Well, ironically, their, their staff will be, yes. Their staff would be there, mm -hmm. right. <laughs> Did that answer that question? I guess. I guess their staff is not an elected official, though. Right? Yeah, that, yeah, that is correct. Yeah. But they would be non-voting. Uh, uh, they would be non-voting representatives anyway. The congressional mm -hmm. members. Let, would let be. me just say, during the select, the 20 meetings of the select committee, there was congressional representation at every meeting. There was never a member of Congress at those meetings. Right. You know, they do. Their their workplace is 3,000 miles away. So. Uh, so their staff is often representing them at things, and they're there to, to make sure that the, that the process is fair and that the, the FAA is doing what they say they're gonna do, and they're backing us up in, in D.C. And then are we voting on the alternate also? It, it's presented as a designee as well, so I, I assume that the alternate would I be... I guess what I'm getting at I'll is... I'll ask the maker of the motion, but... If we, if we appointed uh, the CAO, Carlos Palacios, and then the alternate is John Leopold, uh, Carlos, you could call in sick uh, when there's a meeting, and then John Leopold could actually end up being the one going. <laughs> Carlos looks very unwell right now just with this discussion. <laughs> um, and uh, he anticipates being sick at every meeting under yeah, that circumstance. Exactly. Uh, but I, I think that the maker of the motion, well, the it maker of the motion can explain. his designee from the CAO's office. So the expectation would be that it would be uh, the CAO and then whoever he designates from within his staff at the CAO's office. Well, okay, we'd go for John Leopold being the alternate. Well, so we, okay, but that's not what the motion that's on the floor is. Uh, I make is. an amendment then, a friendly amendment, uh, just that we'll appoint the CAO and then uh, John Leopold Look. would be the alternate. Second. Okay, well, we have to vote on the, on the amendment to the motion, uh, which is just to make the CAO or his designee the primary member and then Supervisor Leopold as, as the alternate, um, which I think is, 
It's already difficult enough under this motion for the CIO, and I think that puts the CIO in a remarkably difficult position to have uh, uh, one of his five bosses be uh, technically underneath him in the position. I think it's an unfair spot just from us, just from a, uh, a position of, of the fact that he works for us. So I won't be supporting that motion because I, I just think that's unfair to the CAO. But all those in favor of the secondary motion say aye. 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 Opposed? Oh. Are you voting yes or no? No. Okay. All those opposed? No. Okay, so it fails three to two. We go back to the original motion. Oh, wait, uh, I'm sorry. The, the motion was on the alternate and yes. the CAO. Yeah, and so now it, go, it reverts back to the original motion. And who voted for it? Was it just two of us? Yeah. Okay, that's clear. So the original, sure. The original motion uh, is to adopt a resolution of the County of Santa Cruz to join <coughs> the round table and direct the CAO to sign the MOU. Uh, with the following conditions. The county's rep will be the CAO or his designee from the CAO's office. The county will join for a year and the CAO will evaluate the effectiveness and benefits of participating in the round table uh, before continuing the membership and submit the information to the board. The chair of the board will write a letter to the FAA and congressional representatives requesting that representatives from the FAA and the affected congressional districts attend all round table meetings as they represent the federal entities who hold the authority to implement recommendations generated by the round table. And lastly, that the CAO or designee is the county's representative on the round table represent the county of Santa Cruz with the direction from this board that the representative work to relieve the immediate impacts of jet noise for those currently experiencing that impact without moving the noise to another part of the county. That's what's the motion that's before us. And there's a motion in a second, so now we'll be voting on that motion. I know, I know. Yeah, you're making it tough. Uh, I, uh, I, my whole thing was uh, the questioning the competence of members of our board. When we turned down Supervisor um, Leopold for being the alternate, we're basically saying he's not qualified or he's, you know, we're questioning his competence. Now we're coming back to the original reason why I'm going one way instead of the other. So. Supervisor, uh, let me just say, for the ma when I made this motion, I am in no way questioning the competence of any supervisor up here to represent. What I am questioning is whether one supervisor can represent not just his district, but the entire county. And for people, when, when they have hundreds of mobilized constituents saying, we want one thing, and a county policy and, and potential impacts on other districts, I think it's best to have a neutral staff member who is going to uh, work under this, these guidelines we've, we've given him to represent the county to the best extent possible. Okay, and it's uh, based on the fact that they would be able to vote at the uh, round table even though they're not an elected official. I, I would expect that the bylaws will change because it's my understanding that Santa Clara and other jurisdictions which are large contributors and would be important to add to the uh, the influence of this roundtable would not participate unless they're going to change these bylaws. So um, not only would, if we all can't participate, everyone else's bills go up uh, and their influence goes down. So I, I would imagine there's an incentive among the roundtable members to allow the flexibility to have staff represent us. Yes. Let me, let me uh, hold, uh, hold on. L let me just offer just a, a slightly different perspective with respect, uh, with all due respect to my colleague. The, uh, let's be clear, what we've heard, what was written in the paper yesterday, is that it's not our decision, it's the FAA decision. So the fact that Santa Clara County or the city of San Jose doesn't want to participate, it's the FAA at the table. So there's no guarantee that, that Santa Clara or city of San Jose will be any more effective um, uh, about changing these rules than anybody else, and their participation in it does not m indicate that they will not, that this group will not be effective with the uh, Federal Aviation Administration. So what, w what this motion proposes is that we take a leap of faith that somehow the bylaws are gonna change, that, that we've designated a staff member who is not eligible currently to participate, to represent the needs of tens of thousands of people who are currently affected, and which we could all agree, um, deserve representation with the FAA, and this is our only means. So I think, I think that, that, that it would be better for us to appoint a member of the 
of this of this board to serve on there. They can give them direction about what it is you'd like to request that um, that we uh, live with that. Uh, um, nomination if the, this uh, board does chooses not to accept it, and that we have an adv a strong advocate for all people in Santa Cruz County. Uh, I've, I've, uh, I have lots of constituents here because they're the ones who are currently affected. But my work on the select committee, these recommendations, which now, even though uh, not everybody voted on it, are held as sacred, that these nine uh, pieces are, are somehow, uh, th that was a creation, that was, I led the creation of those nine pieces. So um, you, it, I, I've worked very hard to make sure that this doesn't impact anyone in Santa Cruz County. And I'd like to continue to do that, but we should at least have a representative that can vote the first day this round table meets. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. I don't want to get into it uh, back and forth, but those recommendations, those criteria could only garner a two to two vote of the representatives from this county. And then, you said, you just said, that the p tens of thousands of people who are currently affected deserve representation, and it got a applause line, but you didn't say, or the hundreds of thousands of people that could be impacted. You, you are passionate about this issue because your constituents are deeply impacted and you're gonna represent it, but you're not. Please, please, please. You're not, in this, you aren't saying, and I will fight just as hard, because if that flight path gets moved, this will be full of constituents from another districts, and I will fight just as hard. I'll keep it over my district until I know that with 100% certainty that it will, that it's going to be, uh, that it won't impact anybody else. It's, 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 it's not a promise that's unwilling to make. So I would prefer, and I would, do, and I in this, in this, in your shoes, I would do the exact same thing. Well, and and so I would fight. Please, I would please fight. don't ascribe your motives to me. Yes. All right. Don't. I have worked very hard to represent everyone in Santa Cruz County. I heard hours and hours of testimony from people in Santa Cruz County. I pushed to make sure that we had a meeting here in Santa Cruz County where hundreds of people uh, showed up. I have answered countless number of emails, pro and con. I have made myself available at public meetings and I have listened uh, to concerns. Some of the, the, some of the people who don't support me made assertions today th that were factually not accurate. Um, there may have been people who support me who also made statements that are factually not accurate. But uh, I, I've been working hard to represent everyone and if you look at that, at, at that recommendation, it was designed to be less impactful than what had been over Santa Cruz County for decades. So I'm not, uh, I'm not ceding the point that somehow I won't represent the gentleman in, 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 uh, in this uh, first row or that th there are the, the tens of thousands of your constituents. I am going to work hard to make sure they never experience what the people in the red shirts here ha have experienced. I know that from experience. And when the when city of Santa Cruz uh, uh, was faced this in February, because of, of, of a publishing error on the part of the FAA, I offered my hand to say, let's work together. So that's, that's my commitment uh, to this. So I, I, don't, I just don't buy the frame that somehow I, I won't represent everybody in Santa Cruz. Okay. Uh, Supervisor McPherson has called uh, the question. Uh, we can, we're supposed to vote immediately on calling the question, but unless people, can we just vote on the motion? Or would you rather vote on calling the question? All right, well, let's just vote on calling the question. All those in favor of ending debate on this motion, please say aye. 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 Opposed? No. no. Okay, so it's three to two now. We move back to the original motion and we're gonna vote on the motion as stands. All those in favor of the motion as presented, say aye. 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 Opposed? No. Okay, it, it passes four to one, Supervisor Leopold. Uh, wait, uh, oh, I'm sorry, wait. did you vote no? I, I th the, what was the second motion? I, I the, the, I mo the motion from Supervisor Coonerty that was presented, that was handed out to you, that we already read out. Right. Yeah, I'm voting no. Okay, so it's a three to two vote then. Um, and that is uh, for the combined items eight and nine. Yeah. Okay. 
Based so, on the alternate part. Yes. So the only thing that we have left are, is closed session. Is there anything reportable from closed session? Depending on your vote, yes. Is there anybody from the community who'd like to address us on the closed session item? What's the topic? Council, do you want to give the... The board is considering, based on facts and circumstances, whether to file a lawsuit against a party to be named after the filing of the lawsuit. That has, that's a closed session, it has nothing to do with the, the FAA. Um, so the board then is going to go into closed session, but we'll recess because we have a seven o'clock item tonight in Watsonville on zone seven, which is uh, the board of directors of Santa Cruz County Flood Control and Water Conservation District will convene and carry out a regularly scheduled meeting beginning at seven at the Civic Pla uh, Center Plaza in Watsonville. So Chair, we'll recess Chair, until seven. I will not be at the meeting this evening. Uh, it's the beginning of a Jewish holiday and I'll, I'll be gone.